first one gets handed out, I think, uh, Mayor Burgess or something, he might say, and then what we're going to do is it's an ad hoc committee of a decision made on the radio uh, system that Russell County can tell us. Uh, a brief presentation, they might give us, and then we can go ahead. Yeah. We'll invite uh, Mr. Gurley to come on up here and be ready to get going here. I'd just like to say that uh, this group that uh, Joe Gurley is going to be speaking for here have spent a, a lot of time, a lot of quality time on doing just what we asked them to do, trying to help us identify what our major priorities and, and needs are with respect to our communications in, in the county. And I won't read all this, but if you look on the first page of this handout we've given you here, you can see that Joe Gurley is John Johnson, Steve Lane, who is with us, uh, and Charles Phipps. All of those have years of experience in uh, radio systems uh, and processes. So they are, they brought to us a tremendous wealth of experience and, uh, and they've done all this on their own time. They have had a number of meetings and you'll also notice on the bottom of that page that we've had a number of our people that have been meeting with them as well. Brian Robertson, Roger Allen, Mike Nunley, Tommy Brown, Steve Spence, and Candy McCluskey. So this group have had a really good working relationship and they've really put their hearts and heads together here and, and they've, so Joe is going to give us just tonight uh, a report, an overview of this report. This report's gonna be left for you to digest in more detail and we're going to have a lot more discussion about this as time progresses here over the next few months. But we thought it would be good if we could let him spend 10 or 15 minutes to sort of review and give you their take on exactly what we're accomplishing here and what, what we're trying to do. So I'm going to get out of the way of the actual projector here. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Ms. Gerling? Thank you. Welcome. Uh, and Steve, welcome to you too. Mr. Chairman, committee members, uh, we're happy to be able to present a, an overview tonight of what we've been working on for roughly the last year. And that's a, a fairly comprehensive uh, overview of, of where we stand with regard to communications in the county and, and what we might do to, to improve them. Uh, first question that I'd like to or my slide is, why did we undertake it? Well, number one, the mayor asked us to. But besides that, uh, there's just a lot of areas uh, in the county uh, that where handheld coverage is non-existent. And there are some areas in the county where mobile coverage is non-existent. And we believe that the firefighters, paramedics, deputies, and the citizens they serve really deserve better in a, in a county of this size and demographics. Current status, uh, public safety agencies are using uh, uh, various sites uh, in the county that none of which are linked together. Uh, none of the sites provide adequate handheld coverage in all parts of the county. Uh, this is probably not the best slide, but this is uh, kind of a, uh, it's a radio propagation prediction and you can see the white areas are where we have no handheld. This is talk back. This is handheld coverage. You can see in those white areas are, are areas, and they're mostly around the periphery. Uh, but that doesn't mean that in some of those other areas, I have another slide that's multicolored. Uh, you know, if you go in, you may have coverage in the yard, but if you go into the house, or especially even in town here, if you go into a dense building, uh, you may lose coverage and if you're on a domestic call uh, or you're trying to save someone's life, uh, you don't want to lose coverage when you go inside. What's the most pressing need? Uh, we looked at a lot of different things and, and where this committee goes is up to the mayor. We're strictly an ad hoc advisory group, uh, but we determined fairly quickly the infrastructure and infrastructure we're defining is towers, buildings, generators, the base stations and the microwave linking of all the sites to provide a seamless system. How many sites do we need? Well, once again, we got back and used some uh, radio uh, prediction software that we had available and uh, 
by using that, we determined that we need five sites uh, at strategic areas in the county. So we started looking for those sites. Uh, a couple of those sites, the county either already has uh, Lynch Hill, uh, soon we'll have access to uh, Tiger Hill. Uh, but the other three uh, <coughs> locations, so we had to do a little bit of searching and, and we did quite a bit of searching. Uh, uh, we also look to try to provide those uh, it's one thing that there's plenty of hills in my 12 years with Sprint in developing most of the sale sites in the count in the uh, Middle Tennessee uh, market. Uh, you know, you can find a hill, but it's another thing to build a road to the top of it. And that can get into the six digit figures easy. So we tried to find sites that uh, would not entail spending six digit figures to uh, you just, just to get a road there and then start. Uh, this is the coverage uh, with uh, handheld coverage with all five sites, and you can see it's it's much much improved. Uh, the five sites are at the Milton Water Tower. You can you can read the report. The locations are are in the report. There's maps in the report. I threw this slide in uh, at the last. Uh, we want to microwave link all these sites together. Uh, and this shows how that would happen. Uh, we also want to tie it back into the uh, fiber network for the county. Uh, things are going to uh, voice over IP, uh, both your phone <coughs> system and everything in the communications world just about. And uh, so we want to be able to provide data access. This, this provides a lot of uh, capability in terms of redundancy and, and other things on down the road beyond of what we're looking at immediately. Uh, what type of system to use? Uh, well, the microwave we put in, we want it to be digital. We want it to be capable of supporting both the radio uh, channels that we use right now, and we want it to uh, be able to support data. Uh, and we looked at what type, and there's some discussion in the report as far as the type of system we wanted one that would require the least intervention uh, by the officer or paramedic or firefighter as they went across uh, from one location uh, to another in the county. In other words, they wouldn't have to switch channels in route while they're running 33 traffic. Uh, uh, so we selected a simulcast system, uh, requires no user intervention. Uh, as I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, the future is digital. Uh, we're probably a ways away from that, several years away from going digital, because uh, right now we don't have good analog. Mm -hmm. But uh, we want the, the infrastructure that we put in to be capable of, of, of being P25 digital, although initially we'll run it as analog. The FCC has mandated that every channel in use be narrow banded by December 31st of 2012. Uh, that's about two and a half years off. Uh, there's some things uh, as far as subscriber units being done in the Nashville UASE, and we kind of kind of tried to correlate this, but there will still be uh, fixed equipment. So some of this will off be offset by what you're going to wind up having to do anyway, because this is an unfunded uh, federal mandate. There are a few potential technical issues. Uh, we didn't attempt uh, to get into a detailed engineering study. Uh, they mainly uh, involve the relationship of certain VHF frequencies that are in use uh, uh, in EMS and fire and so on at the present time. Uh, we can get into that uh, in more detail when we uh, get ready to start engineering uh, the system. One of the things that we feel strongly about is that it should be implemented as a system. Uh, that can, in, in, in the overall, it can result in lower cost because you're beating a larger uh, project. It can, in, uh, when you bid a larger project, you, a lot of times you can get some project management expertise along with that. Uh, which uh, we feel is important. Uh, uh, installation, you bring a crew in here to build one tower, they can build two towers. Uh, they can, you bring a crew in here to hang antennas at one site, then go from site to site. 
uh, you buy your coax in rolls of 5,000 feet instead of already cut and, and paying a premium for it. So there's a lot of uh, economies of scale, that, uh, but then the more overriding thing is, in addition to cost, is make sure we get a compatible system. Uh, because as fast as technology is changing uh, today, you can buy a piece of equipment today and next year the vendor may not even offer it. And uh, so then you start getting into incompatibility and trying to make it work. And basically what you'd be doing is piecemealing. Piecemealing it, right. Uh, however, we did include in the report a single site implementation priority list. Uh, Here's what everybody's probably wanting to know. <laughs> What's it going to cost? Uh, this, our cost estimate that we've put together through some querying around to various vendors and some uh, experience, uh, et cetera. Um, we feel the microwave is going to run around a half a million. The, five-channel simulcast system is going to run around a million. The Tiger Hill site, uh, I know you just talked about a hundred something thousand on a tower. We think the tower may have to be a bit higher than the 180 feet, uh, especially to support some of the microwave equipment and have all the uh, RF uh, base station antennas at 180 feet or higher. Uh, also Tiger Hill, most of you know it's a bed of rock. Uh, so we don't want to uh, wind up when we put a, a, a lot of equipment up there because that's going to be the hub. We want to do a good grounding system. That's going to cost several thousand dollars, you know, twenty thousand or more dollars uh, to uh, provide. The, we're going to have to make a ground system. Uh, I think the state finally came back and did some of that to their site after it uh, suffered a lot of failures. Uh, uh, then about 200,000 for the uh, Milton site. We will only need a 180-foot tower. It won't have to hold near as much equipment uh, at the Milton site. Three out of the five sites, uh, Lynch Hill, or two out of the five sites, Lynch Hill, uh, actually three, Lynch Hill, uh, Middleton Sea Electric. Middleton Sea Electric has agreed to allow us to move a majority at least put the simulcast system on their tower at Smyrna. Uh, that has some advantages down the, the long haul. And if they have microwave linking to other sites, and one of the things that we're working on in a, as a region thing through the Nashville UASI is, is regional system and being able to tie various uh, systems together. And they provide some possibilities there. Uh, uh, on down the road. Um, Williamson County has agreed on the, the west, the southwest site. Uh, they're working to try to acquire a site to allow sharing of that site once they acquire it. Uh, they're releasing it now. And so really we're only going to have to build two towers. Uh, and that's, uh, and, and one of them, the Milton site, we looked. We looked at a lot of locations out there. Uh, but this one's got a road to it, it's got power to it, and uh, a governmental entity already owns it. So uh, we chose that. Uh, it provides the coverage, and uh, it's going to be much cheaper to develop than uh, one of the hilltop sites right there along the border. And uh, that's really all I have. Uh, uh, but basically, one of those, with, with these five sites, and I guess, and I, and I can't think of the name of the study. It, it, I can't remember the name of it, but you know these peaks and valleys and stuff to make sure that the radio gets over these over these hills right. and stuff. Right, it hits it from different angles. Right, so 95 percent coverage on handhelds throughout Lubbock mm -hmm. County, and 100 percent on mobiles. On mobiles. Yeah, yeah. The uh, it, it's. Uh, the infrastructure is going to be needed, whether we go to a simulcast system or whether we uh, put up additional repeaters uh, or whatever system 
you decide to do in the long run, you still need the infrastructure. Right. Uh, another thing that the reason we decided on the microwave is covered in, in, the, in the report uh, is that uh, the phone lines are just unreliable in bad weather. When do you need the public safety system most? You need it during the most right. extenuating circumstances. And uh, <coughs> we experience a lot of times, uh, whether you realize it or not, the cell sites link back via phone line to their, their switch. So a lot of times the cell site's running, and, and I mentioned that in the report. So a lot of times your site could be up, but if you're using a phone line to link it, then the phone line is down. Another thing is that Bell is uh, rapidly doing away with what they call radio control circuits or RT circuits. Uh, copper is going away, and, uh, and uh, you soon won't be able to even get an RT circuit. Uh, so uh, that's another reason. The microwave, like I said, the infrastructure, the towers, the buildings, the microwave is there no matter what you put with it. And mm -hmm. where you go in the future. Robert, you got a question? Yeah, I got a couple. <clears throat> How will this microwave link and digital link compare to what we have now when we have a large disaster? I mean, you know, we had the tornadoes recently. Uh, you know, all of us at work in public safety know how the communications are and they get bogged down just like you said you can't get out on a cell phone they're linked to them but how does this microwave link and the digital link that you're wanting to get compare i mean we're going to have the same type of well the microwave you know you're going to you, you always have the possibility of of taking out a microwave link uh but it's less likely than a phone line they require, would most likely require a direct hit on the tower side. The microwave is dedicated uh, to you. It's dedicated to the county uh, service. So it's not shared with anyone else. Uh, it's, it's strictly a, a county owned asset. Kind of like a wireless type. A wireless to, link. To a and type. a lot of uh, uh, cellular carriers are going back to microwave uh, in the current time frame. Uh, to get away from some of the things that we've talked about, but it would be uh, pretty reliable. Most microwave links are spec to 99.99% reliability in terms of the path. Obviously, if you get a tornado, uh, a tower I built in uh, northeast Shelby County in um, uh, West Tennessee back several years ago for THP, 340-foot tower got hit by a tornado a couple of years ago and came down. So, a direct hit. Well, I understand, you know, something being hit, lightning. But, but, taken unit out. well, we would hope at <clears throat> most of these sites, if we engineer these sites properly, that we would minimize the lightning effect. There are ways to do that, and uh, it would be kind of foolish to put in a system that wasn't I, protected. I think what I'm getting at is more is volume of traffic. I mean, volume of traffic going. volume of traffic is not really addressed per se in here, but what is we've spec uh, what we based our cost estimate on was twelve uh, links between sites, uh, uh, but like twelve phone lines with the uh, uh, capability to expand to twenty four in addition to an ethernet capability between the uh, between the sites that's the robustness of the microwave so if you put in a 20 channel uh, uh, trunking system 10 years down the road you'll have the capability to support the 20 channel trunking system uh, the only way you can have increased capacity is add increased channels uh, unfortunately there are very few channels available in VHF or UHF, so to gain increased channels is most likely going to require going to some other band uh, five, six, seven, eight, ten years down the road. But there, there's a lot of different aspects that we didn't look at. We felt that if you don't have the hardware up, you don't have the infrastructure, you can't do anything. Okay. Can't put the first channel out there. I understand. And I'm not trying to be negative. I've no, just got some no. Questions there's a legitimate on. question, and we'd be happy as a, as a group to to meet with the committee at any time. And two of my, Mr. Lane is here, and two other members. Uh, they have a a state uh, exercise going on in West Tennessee, and they're at that 
uh, tonight and are unable to be here. I'll be the first one to say it's important to be able to communicate when you're standing out on a fire scene or you got a police officer that has to leave his vehicle and go in pursuit of someone. So it's awfully dangerous. But the other question I had is, <clears throat> I understand this is for the infrastructure, buying, buying uh, the land, building the towers, roads, and all that. What about the cost to the individual agencies as far as new communication equipment, or can they utilize what they're using there? No, this is on existing channels. This is infrastructure on existing channels. Uh, some agencies are in better shape than others uh, as far as all the agencies are going to have to narrow band by that December 31st, 2012. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 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 UASI is working at some possible funding, but whether that will be sufficient, that's you know, but they're going to have to have, it doesn't address subscriber units, it doesn't, or, or mobiles and portables, uh, and, and I think various agencies are in, uh, better, some of them are in better shape than others in terms of if, what they have. If the U.S. gives everything we've asked for, we still going to have the same problem without the number of sites. Right. Yeah. This is it's not going to it's not going to help your coverage. You're still right. going to have you, places where you can't use those narrow right. banded portables or mobiles. And, right. And that's really the that's the what we saw initially, uh, and and thought was the number one priority. If an officer doesn't have coverage, it doesn't matter. He can have a three thousand dollar portable hanging on his hip, but if he can't use it, it's not worth anything. Yeah. And one last thing I want mm -hmm. to ask. These Homeland Security grants that we've been getting over the last several years, could we channel some of this through those, do you think? As I understand it, there's a... If it got Mr. a Allen, you can for it. Is it a hundred and something thousand dollars for a tower on Tiger Hill that could go against... That uh, could go mm -hmm. against uh, this figure, so yes. Uh, it would have to make it through all the committees mm -hmm. and then be voted on to we a lot that money. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, they're, you're fighting against other folks mm -hmm. and other municipalities <clears throat> asking for equipment. Well, I mean, we're piggybacking this with all our agencies. What about the city of Murfreesboro? Would they be uh, tied into this or is that separate? All our other municipalities would be separate too, I assume. We're on 800 in Smyrna. Y'all are on 800 now, right? No, uh, Y'all are? Yeah, I think we're all on different frequencies and yeah. channels. Mm -hmm. That might be something we can work at. As a group that's that's something forward. possibly, and that's, that's like I said, uh, whether this committee even stays in existence or not, or whether it, it reforms into something else is up to the mayor and other. Well, we members. We as a, I mean, say we. I'm talking about the public safety committee and 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 the agencies that fall under this committee have known for a long time. We've had some problems out there and because of firefighters and paramedics and deputies and, and animal control and different ones. They can't get out. Right. They, they get out there and in in no man's land. And you got a, police, a deputy out there in a domestic situation. Um, I've been there. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I've had somebody that that happened to, me. and you get on the fire scene and you get inside that house and you, you can't and you talk. Go, go down. You can't get out to the command or, or right you know, or like an EMS has somebody you know yeah. doing something and they can't get out of the wall walkie talkie. It's a serious situation. So anybody else? Just like to ask, you, Mayor, do you think any of the municipalities would would participate with the cost of this? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think we're going to get much assistance there, so I think we're going to have to devise a plan that we can work over the next, no more than the next, across two budget years at most, and do this as one project, hopefully. We'll, we'll bring you some ideas on how we might do that. Mike, I was in Laverne today. Laverne is on Metro now. They, they've they yeah, bought into yeah, Metro. They've, they've bought into Metro system. And which they have <laughs> switched totally. And, I'm in Smyrna and we're on 800, running off one tower, but which won't help this system at all. Of course, Metro has a great tower looking down on Laverne. So. And Cane Ridge, yeah. yeah. Uh, this graph that I'm looking at here, is this just coverage on that frequency or is this just coverage? This is UHF coverage. Okay, so Davidson County, some of these others don't right. use that at all. Okay, right. so this graph just shows this is just covering into southeastern Davidson yeah. and 
RF doesn't, South Southern. doesn't follow county lines. I mean, it's just out there. So we're the only county that's using that system. Here. No, this is this is UHF. This could be any UHF frequency. The point I'm making is these yeah. other areas don't have coverage in these other counties. No, if, 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 so if this I, graph only pertains our county. If our radio system right. that's in Rutherford County, whether it be uh, <coughs> EMS, fire, um, sheriff's office, or whatever, that's the boundaries that they're feeding out to. Some of those may go over in Davidson County, but there's some areas in Rutherford County that's not being hit. Davidson is, of course, 800. Uh, Williamson is primarily UHF. Uh, the counties to the south, uh, Coffee, Bedford are UHF in terms of law enforcement. Cannon's VHF in law enforcement. Wilson's VHF in law enforcement. So you have a hodgepodge, and that's. Yeah. But that's basically just the frequencies here in Rutherford County through our agencies. Right. It's kind of where that. That's what the site on Tiger Hill covers right now. That's what it doesn't cover. You mentioned U.S. earlier. Are they coming up with a. We're 13 counties in this program now, this U.S. program. Are they going to come up with a There's seven plan? Counties. Or is there seven in this? Seven. One? Are they coming up with a plan? Because, again, I know Wilson, Rutherford, including us, and uh, Williamson County, Robertson County. Is it? No. What is it? It's Sumner, Sumner County. I know these got they got the same exact issue we got. Are they? I mean, this seems like if this narrow banding is coming down a pipe in 2012, this is going to be a huge issue. The narrow band, I think, is being addressed at, through the UASI in terms of the subscriber units, not in terms and also some of the base stations. But uh, I think the, uh, at the last UASI meeting that I was in attendance at that. There's a lot more demand, uh, a lot more units than probably what there's going to be funding for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there there may be some funding, but it probably won't satisfy the, all the needs. Mm -hmm. The narrow band, band mandate, from what I've followed for the last 18 years, I think, uh, you know, the commission is given 18 years for entities to act on this. So. They're not in a mood right now to give waiver. Waiver. And more than likely, you look at the Trousdale and the smaller counties are probably in worse shape than the than us in Rutherford County. More than likely, like Cannon County and you know the narrow band stuff. It's oh. anybody else? Any more questions? Again, we appreciate the work that y'all did, and we know you've done it. You've donated a lot of time and effort and, and knowledge to this thing, and we appreciate what y'all did on this. I appreciate the opportunity to present. <coughs> Thank and you. And hopefully, at some point in time, we can get this thing up and running. Thank you. All right. Uh, rescue Squad, Rutherford Rescue Squad. Come on, let him take that on out while you're getting started there. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Gill with the uh, Rescue Squad. I've handed you each a packet. You would say that, I'd be This goes over the uh, 2009 summary, and uh, we actually went into a little bit of January on some of this. Uh, if you go to the first page, um, I know you've all got this in front of you and you can all read it, but. Uh, First page is a breakdown of the, our vehicles for the 2009 uh, end year report. We started off with uh, 700, which is um, a service truck, and then we went to 702, which is the uh, Chevy Impala, which is a, another service uh, service vehicle. Um, the first page deals with maintenance costs on those uh, on those specific units. If you look at 703, uh, the budget, the the figure is. Uh, considerably higher than the rest. Simple reason being you'll see later on in the package that 703 is one of the vehicles that re responds to um, a, a good percentage of the calls. Uh, that's the truck that we keep in service most of the time. That's why the figure on the maintenance is a little higher. Uh, go to uh, the second page. Any questions on that first page on the uh, maintenance cost of those vehicles? On the second page we'll go to a fuel summary. Uh, broken down into the different months of the year. Uh, total being on there was 
just a, a five and a half thousand. Um, maintenance on equipment. And in May we had a hydraulic repairs and serviced all yeah, hydraulic equipment. We'll do an annual servicing on all of that stuff. It was done in May. And then in December we had some more maintenance costs on, on our equipment, which was uh, replacing fuel tank and hydraulic pumps and uh, repairing some of our, our tools. Uh, the training classes we provided, uh, if we're going on between page two and three, the training class we provided last year, um, a lot of these training classes you'll see are community-based training classes, um, a lot of CPR classes to the communities, and then obviously we're taking care of extrication classes for the volunteer fire departments. Um, any of these ones for the community, um, this is part of our fundraising for the squad, this is part of our fundraising for the squad, um, just through the CPR classes and um, first aid classes. Uh, pretty much every month of the year we were busy doing some sort of training class. Um, and then we did a lot of uh, the EVOC training and we did uh, several extrication classes throughout the year for the volunteer fire departments uh, in the county. <coughs> then uh, public relations meeting, uh, we did some... Uh, medical standby, first aid standbys, not really medical standbys, but more of a first aid standby um, at several of the high schools. Uh, we did the communications meeting uh, with EOC. Going on through the year, we attended several TARS uh, regional meetings, one being in Bedford County, uh, the other one being in Clay County. Um, obviously, we had uh, in July, we had the board of directors meeting here in Murfreesboro. And then uh, we did a medical standby in Smyrna, and uh, I did a medical standby in uh, in Smyrna, and then one for the tornado and one being for the Lions Club. Uh, we assisted with the uh, tornado, um, obviously that came through the county, but the one prior to the big one coming through, we assisted the bo the Boys and Girls Club of Rutherford County here in Murfreesboro with relocating the uh, children to the McFadden Community Center. Um, their building was severely damaged, so we helped out with that. Um, if you look at the extrication calls for 2009, um, we were 18 calls. And then we're into 2010 already. We already had five so far this year. The page um, with the power graph on it depicts our uh, actual runs of service. Um, 391 for the year. I know I said 18 extrications. The 391 runs for the year. Um, rescues and EMS, we did 160. Hazardous conditions, we did one. Service calls, uh, we did three. And then good intent calls, we did 227 of those. Following page is a breakdown of the incidents per the month. Um, this is obviously is putting our information into the computer in a timely manner. We'll generate these, these graphs. Uh, so that with the graph over there on the page is pretty much what happened per month throughout the year. Once again, if we go to the other graph on the vehicles, if you look at 703 once again, 221 of those runs were actually done by 703. It's, as I said, that's the primary truck we keep in service most of the time. And we might switch up between 704 and 705 or 704-1 as it's illustrated here. Keep in mind the previous maintenance records were so high because if you can see that vehicle runs quite a few calls. And then the following page was uh, calls of service for members. Um, these might vary. We have one in particular that stands out, and uh, he's mainly at the building most of the time. Um, he stays down there, so he will pick up a lot of our runs for us, and then the other members will fill in on the rest of the runs with him. When he's like that, or on those 153 runs, does he normally respond by himself? Um, it all no. I mean, most of the time there's there's a, we try to keep a minimum of two on the truck. But if staffing doesn't allow it, then we will, you know, we'll put one on the truck. But um, we don't, we don't try and run with two, uh, with one because it's unsafe to run with one. We try and keep two on the truck. Um, generally, there's, if there's one guy on the truck, there's always a supervisor, either myself 
or the chief is available to run with him as in a supervisory position. So we, we always have two going in the calls. Um, it's very unsafe to run one guy on the call, mm -hmm. but we, it's a volunteer agency and right. um, we can do as best we can with staffing. So if, if I, we, I'm just wondering because that, that big a disparity there. I, I, I figured there might be times when there's only one person on that truck. Right. Most of the time we're trying to keep more than one on there, but if it, as I say, we're a volunteer agency, keeping right. one on there is better than none. So, <laughs> do you have any questions regarding this uh, packet I gave you or anything like that? How many hours does that gentleman volunteer? He he's a he's a living. He actually stays down the squad. So yeah. if he we ask him if he's down there, um, if a call comes in, if he would run the call. Uh, we pretty commendable. What's and what's his name? Kenny Hutchins. Okay. Um, he actually works for Sumner County EMS too, as a dispatcher up there. But um, he lives there, and uh, that's part of the, his his agreement. He would run calls if he's available to run there. That's a lot of donate a lot of time. That's good. Anybody else? If not, I entertain a motion. Let me ask real quick here. This, okay. this vehicle you spent thirty three hundred on. Who's doing a lot of these maintenance? Um, we'll actually wouldn't say shop or we'll shop around, but we, we don't have a set contract with anybody in town. But we'll generally use um, several of the places. Uh, we used to use the place over in Cason Lane, the uh, tire store out there that will do maintenance too. But we've since recently switched to uh, the tire store over the road from Station 2 on uh, South Church Street. There's a, um, a tire store out there just down from Station 2 in Murfreesboro Fire Department. Gateway. Gateway tire, that's I couldn't remember offhand what it was. We've, we've sort of switched to them lately because they seem to be a little bit cheaper on their rates and uh, get the truck in and out within a timely manner. So We had a mayor, was it Mac, that came in? Mac, that came in on the solid waste with some good bids. That's what the maintenance on that one. Well, you might check, Brian. That just seems kind of high. Yeah, I mean, but just keep in mind how that, that truck is a uh, primary service, in service truck, so the maintenance costs are generally how the mileage adds up fairly quickly on that truck. So, But yes, we'll definitely look into to looking around. Mm -hmm. We try to try to keep it down to a minimum and, and search. Any more questions? Just curiosity when dealing with uh, your fundraisers, how often and what types of ones? We have a picture drive that's going on right now that we, we're doing in the county that uh, they approached by, uh, we have a private fundraiser that will go out and solicit mm -hmm. um, a picture drive for them and that would include obviously the pictures and then obviously a donation to, their money will go towards a picture but a portion of that would go to us as a donation mm -hmm. uh, from it. Uh, we try and as I say do as many classes as we can, CPR classes, and first aid classes in the county to raise money uh, for the squad. Um, doing some medical standbys will generate a little bit of money for us if we're doing a first aid standby somewhere that we can practice as that. Anybody else? You have a motion? Motion to, I think he's already made a motion. Motion to approve the report. Motion to have a second. second. Have a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Sheriff's Department report. Okay. How are you doing? Just fine. Budget request is to recognize $25,000 going into our data processing equipment. This is from the Murfreesboro City Police Department for helping processing uh, arrestees. Second budget amendment is to request uh, money going into our prisoner clothing account for $15,000 and also requesting 
money going into our office supply account in order to buy a new copy machine for our booking room for $5,500. That's just an estimated price. And the money we're going to take within our budget out of our salary accounts. The third request is to replace a totaled vehicle uh, for $23,053, pulling $5,500 out of the insurance recovery amount and $17,553 from the judgments. And the fourth amendment is to show the revenue for the $6,800 for um, vehicles that need repairing with $1,165 going to repairs and $56,35 going into <coughs> vehicle account. Any questions? You don't, you've heard a request. If not, I entertain a motion. Motion. <clears throat> motion to approve. I've got, I've got a motion and a second. With no, he is at home. All right. Discussion? All room? Commissioner Black? Yes. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Stark? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. All right. Okay. Next. Uh, the next paperwork in your packet is uh, we would like to apply for a grant. Uh, I believe uh, the mayor and the sheriff have discussed this. This is for a stop grant for a domestic violence position. If you look on the second page, the funding is grant 75% and the county 25%. It is a three-year grant. And this is a for like a detective mm -hmm. rank. Any questions? So the three years it's going to cost, or they're going to give us one hundred seventy-five thousand? No, one hundred thirty-one thousand, right? Uh, yes. Including our yeah. contribution. Yeah. yeah. Including our contribution of forty-three thousand eight hundred. It's a total of one hundred seventy-five two eight two seventy-eight. Any questions? Yeah. Examples of the in-kind that we can use for this. Is this, could this be none? <laughs> okay. We want you to allow us to make this application the sheriff does, and we don't know if we get it, but if and when we get it, we will want you to have more discussion as to if we really want to put it, when we look at the whole budget process, but uh, we don't want to miss this opportunity, and then we will still have uh, a chance for final review once we determine if we really get this thing okay. Right now, you just ask for permission to apply for it. Yes, sir. <coughs> Entertain a motion. Thank you. So moved to approve the motion. Is there, is there a second? Second. And a second. Discussion. All rules. Is this got a budget now or later? I think we probably should just wait until later to get okay. approved and put it through All right. the whole process. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. And just look, look over your report there as far as the line items. And you got any questions? Everything's pretty much within the guidelines and all that stuff, right? Entertain a motion whenever y'all ready to make one on the report. So moved. Motion to have a second. Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Is that it? Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move up here. Let's see. Will tax officer report. Give one for the sheriff. Moving up here since you got a budget name in that. That's the old first thing, okay? Yep. And then the OSHA report and then uh, Correctional Work Center. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. All right. Sarge's passing this out. Are all the rest of the uh, departments going to be at the next meeting or is the sheriff going to be separate? The, the budget. The sheriff and the um, Correctional Work Center budgets, we're probably going to have to have a different meeting to take care of those whenever they get those turned in. And then once I, once we do, they can, they can get with me and we can schedule a meeting. 
and it may be that we might be able to wait until March meeting. I don't know. We'll just have to we'll cross that bridge. I'm going to get with the mayor and we'll find out. All right. Go ahead here. Chairman, I don't have a thing. Does y'all have some questions? You know, if you do look back on the back page, uh, about the wheel tax and the motor vehicle and stuff, all I, that, this does not include anything of Nissan's. I'm breaking it down for you by the month, okay. and I'll have those figures. So these figures are not this high because I'm not including them in there in these figures. You know, and I've requested to other counties joining to us that have the wheel tax. See where theirs are. I've got uh, I've got Woodbury. There's considerably off. Bedford County is, of course, it does not have a wheel tax, but their motor vehicles and titles are off. Williamson County wouldn't give me anything. Said so theirs, they don't even ask for that in their budget. So. Metro, I'll get theirs too, and theirs are considerable, you know. But I don't have anything. Anybody have any questions? As far as, you know, emissions and so forth, what, what county do you think people, if they felt emissions, would be trying to register a car in? Well, Woodbury, Bedford County doesn't have emissions. Yeah. Coffee County doesn't have emissions, you know. The coffee's down also. Coffee, of course, Coffee County. It doesn't touch us, but I asked for that too. Every county that I've asked is down, you know, through motor vehicles, titles, and all, you know. I was trying to hope, I was hoping we could get a pretty good figure out of Williamson County because they're comparable to us, you know. But she advised me she wouldn't give them figures, so they don't do that. All right, anybody else? What is this six pending for an unlawful dumping? That's uh, pending cases. It hadn't come to court yet. Oh, yeah, but yeah. you've cited it. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Set okay. up a court date. Yes, sir. I assume that's what it was. Yes, sir. I wanted to be sure. Will they get fined from that? Do they generally, the ones that go to court? Or do well, they... uh, yes, sir. If, especially the ones that we've had to go back and clean up ourselves, I add the county's time and the, and the tonnage and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And, of course, they can pay the fine and, and don't go, too. Anybody else? Bart, if, you, if your titles are down like they are here, wouldn't your fines for uh, your, your tag expiration being a violation, wouldn't they go up? I mean, is there any record of keep with that with the municipalities and the sheriff's department? I, uh, I could probably get that out of the, uh, uh, over here. I was just, I'm just, just yeah. curious. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. It, it, gentlemen, it's kind of been a practice if you if you go ahead and get your tags and get up to date stuff, we'll let you buy. So, you know. Yeah, that that's certainly the Judge Buckner's rule when yeah, I quit yeah. practicing. But it, it's it's pretty well close. Both judges make fun of a liar or two, you know. You know, if you've done what you officers ask you to do, they'll pretty well dismiss it. Anything else? If not, I entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Motion report. Gentlemen, <laughs> you have the report in front of you, I believe. Uh, January was the first month of the new OSHA year, so you only have one month reporting to compare with previous years. We had a total of 20 injuries for the month of January, and for the year, of course, that's 20 injuries. You can see the breakout there as far as the uh, frequency for the types of injuries. Of those 20, 12 of them were OSHA recordable, 5 had restricted days, 4 were lost claim days, and 3 were all others. On the next page, if you look at the uh, graph there, you'll see how January this year compares pretty much the same for the last two years, uh, very consistent for the month of January. Um, those 20 injuries right now, the dollars incurred on those are $17,154, and uh, nine of those injuries were with the uh, County General, 
and the incurred dollars on that were eight thousand seven hundred fifty four and the school board had the other eleven and dollars incurred on that is eight thousand four hundred dollars uh, the county general it's uh it's not the board of education and it's not the highway it's all others no i'm saying what part of the departments in the, in the uh, county general had the accident is it the sheriff's department uh there were some in the sheriff's department that's th not what i asked but <laughs> <laughs> which department i can see the sheriff uh -huh. is what i'm getting at but when you get in county general and we're sitting with what 800 people maybe in county general something like that and uh -huh. you got four well, thousand over in uh the board of education mm -hmm. that's what I'm, I'm asking and i can see you know they go the sheriff's department jailers etc get into it and this type thing mm -hmm. but i'm wondering about all the other departments that we have well the ambulance service uh, and i i can't remember specifically right now on that but the ambulance service may have had one with a strain or injury uh, there may also have been one with the custodians as far as cleanup and, and things like that. And, and Kenny General, if there's anything, when it, it gets significant like that, I like what she said. There's okay. nine in there this month, which when it's a fifth of your workforce or less, it makes you, you know, because mm -hmm. like the ones that are dealing with uh, problems and things like that, like the sheriffs or the emergency management in cases or the medical, you can see that when they're left in a nest, I'll, but uh, when you got the other ones, sure. the other I'll department. definitely be break, bring back more of a breakdown on that then. Okay. okay. Um, one thing I would like to uh, bring to your attention, um, Kelly Perrin, who oversees the Get Rutherford Fit program for the county, uh, she got with the Rutherford County EMS and spoke to Randy White and Joe Hafner and they got together and put on a friends and family CPR training program that happened. They did this uh, during the lunch hour where we had uh, approximately 40 county employees that gave up their lunch hour to go over there and participate in the uh, CPR program. And I just wanted to express my thanks to Kelly, uh, Randy, and Joe for their efforts in putting that program together. And the county employees that showed up, again, this was strictly on their own time. They gave up their own lunch time to go list, to conduct that. I participated myself, and I'm going to tell you it was a very fast-paced, very thorough uh, program, uh, and we learned a lot there. So just one test ship base on that. Also, in addition to that, Tim Street has contacted the Board of Education. If you remember during the summer, we talked about some of the uh, accidents happened with the Board of Ed and the custodians during the summer. Uh, Tim has got a uh, custodian uh, supervisor training class set up on March 22nd. He's going to be meeting with all the uh, uh, lead custodians of the schools and participate in a training program with them on that day. So uh, we're doing some training out there for that, along with the CPR and other things, to try and get ahead of some of the injuries and accidents, the things that we've seen, and uh, just wanted to do that. And again, I want to thank Callie, Randy, and Joe for their efforts. In the program. And that's all I have at the moment. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Second. second. And second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Correctional Work Center. I thought I, I seen him out there. Yeah. I thought I seen him on the door. Expecting to be at the hearing. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? All right, good. Yeah. You're a lucky night. You uh, got early. Appreciate it. I moved it up a little bit so you didn't have a budget. That way, you kind of, we would have to, y'all would have to wait around here. So, Yes, sir. Um, making uh, good strides. Uh, got a lot of training programs going on right now for the for the staff and implementing some programs for the inmates and moving right along. Uh, they implemented one out there about the smoking rule. Yes. <laughs> That's no good. Smoking. 
Anybody have any questions? The program's uh, Lieutenant that you speak of. Um, we implement a lot more faith-based programs, uh, a lot more Bible studies. We got uh, the parenting program currently going is great. We got a life skills program about to begin probably within the next couple of weeks. Um, trying to get some people to come out in and show them how to do resumes and conduct job interviews and stuff like that. So we're yeah, moving right along with those programs. We're doing a lot of training for the staff also, teaching them ethics and um, morals and stuff like that while you're on duty and off duty. Little, little things like that. Yeah. Well, I'm hearing a lot of good feedback. Uh, appreciate it. Incident reports are way up. Previous ones, is that because this new way of filing the system that you're taking more incident reports or has been more issues? Um, being more proactive in uh, trying to control the flow of contraband in the facility and also, you know, implementing the officers letting them know that they need to do more documentation when they do these uh, searches and whatnot. Lieutenant, when you were your average person that's in there, what would you describe the age and the, the, the crime they're probably in there for? The average so age, average. I'd say between 19 to 26, 27. Um, most of the offenders are you know, DUIs or drawn suspended license, some domestic violence charges you know, in those categories. Yeah. See a lot of DUIs. Anybody else? Move to approve the report. Do I have a second? Yeah. Have a second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed, motion carries. Anything else? I know, sir. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you. All right. First on the agenda for report and budget would be the Merchant Management Agency. I think you got that in front of you. <clears throat> first off, uh, on the report, um, this report period, we've had uh, just a little bit of bad weather going on. Uh, there's a, a lot of accidents and um, uh, more than normal snow and, and ice situations, uh, but nothing major in the uh, events of the report. And then Larry has uh, some on the uh, fire side. See, the next page is, is uh, the uh, water fire call and water usage per call, and also the training hours for the fire departments. And then the uh, next page is the uh, total water, water usage for the month, which that would involve uh, training and also the fires that they have responded to. Then you have uh, my report in there. Uh, the only thing I want to bring up is that starting March the 1st, which will be next Monday night, we'll be starting a, a, a firefighter rookie school, which will be uh, Monday through Friday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. For, for the whole month of uh, March for these young firefighters to get their, their basic firefighting training in their skills. And uh, that will be from 6 to 10, Monday through Friday, and it'll be for the whole month of, of uh, March. And we've got, uh, I think, 32 or 33 students signed up for it. So we're just going here in Rutherford County? Mm -hmm. Probably all Rutherford County. That's, that, that is extended to all the fire departments in Rutherford County, the 11 volunteer fire departments, which I thought was a really good turnout. Good. <clears throat> so uh, if they can all make it through it, it would be great. 
on the last page is the training schedule. It shows the training that, that we're putting on uh, through the EMA for firefighters. Uh, this last weekend, we had the incident safety officer, which was a uh, TFACA, or Tennessee Fire Academy sponsored class. It's also sponsored by the National Fire Academy. They get two uh, certificates from each uh, academies. And if you look down there, we had a total of nine from Rutherford County and 15 out of county. We had about 15 people from 4th District of Winchester come down. Uh, if that, matter of fact, if it hadn't been for them, I'd have had to cancel the class because Fire Academy requires that you have at least 15 people to, to put on the class. And then in March, we'll have uh, the 20th and 21st, we have an intro to pumps, which will be a uh, pump class to kind of a basic uh, operations class for them to, to be able to operate their pumps on the fire trucks. Terry Smith. And it's 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 academy class, but because of the uh, the large request for it, it's also uh, they'll have to pay for it. And I've, I've advertised that plenty of time. I think uh, the total fee for that's forty one dollars. It was thirty six, and they've gone up. So I hope that I'm hoping that we have at least fifteen students where we can have that class. <clears throat> As I've seen here where it says on the U.S. response committee meeting, jog my memory. In, that, in a meeting, I had asked, I had actually um, mentioned something about 44 air packs for the volunteer fire departments. Um, it's my understanding now that it's not on, on the table. I was told that from the chairman of that response committee. What happened to him? I can't answer that. I haven't done nothing with it. It hasn't been presented to me yet. The uh, They met with the UASI chair for the uh, response, and the task force is meeting with all the chair, UASI chair uh, people on this coming Friday. So I, I have no idea. I received that same e email today. I, I and, I and I have no idea. I'll tell you what I was told. I mean, I'm man up here and tell you what I was told. Okay. I was told you told them to take it off, that you couldn't support it. No, that didn't happen. Um, and, the reason, and the reason I'm I, so adamant about it mm -hmm. is I was adamant in our response committee that I wanted those 44 air packs. Yes, sir. With Because those air packs are on the 90 model fire engines. They're 15 years old. And are fixing to go out of date. I understand. And, and and I was in there at that meeting, and I, and I also said at that meeting, I says, I do not know if they would fund normal operating equipment. Did I not? And I said, but I will support anything that you all push for. I said, I just don't know if they will fund operational equipment. And I want you to check into it. Because I, I have I a meeting with him Friday. Okay. I sure will. And I, I received that email today myself. I'm looking at us. And I wonder why this is changing. I, I, I was too. Okay. Because I was adamant that, that those, I wanted those volunteer fire departments to have those 44 air packs. Well, I think you had asked for more than 44, wasn't it? I asked for 44. That was. Just 40? Okay. That was. Uh, there were 11 departments, and each of them had four, four. Okay. on their, on their O1 trucks, and the harness on them are the old wire harness, and they completely fell apart. A lot of them couldn't use them anymore. Is is the 11 radio? I mean, the uh, computers are there. Are they still on the table? They're still on there, but the 44 air packs are gone. I, I, to me, I think the air packs would be more uh, something that instead of 11 computers. Well, I, I'm sure it's going to be dollar amounts. I think those 44 air packs was 300 something thousand dollars. Probably. I believe. Uh, but again, I have not, it has not been presented to me. I have, I knew what they had put on their request, what they were going to ask for, and then I got this email today that said that they're really reducing it down. I was told that, that, that you told them you couldn't support it, and that's why it was taken off the table. No. <laughs> You'll go back, if, that, if, if that's wrong, yeah, well, that, that's a misunderstanding there because you were there when I made my comment. Well, and you know how adamant I was about yes, having sir. a 44 on there. So, 
You'll go back and check it. We'll move I on. sure will. Anybody else? The, the three grants were waiting on the 07, 08, 09s. Were, <laughs> is that because they are not cutting us checks or why? No, sir. Um, some of that is um, waiting for uh, the specs on, on what they were requesting. Um, and uh, we've just about finished out the 07 grant from the District 6, and some of those we had to ask uh, back to the state for a waiver to do different than what the uh, District 6 had requested. Like on the law enforcement committee, they didn't want PPE, they wanted communications equipment, so we had to go through the process of, them, of FEMA changing District 6 application. And so that's where some of that time delays took place. So like in 07, what we got left? Is it a ton of stuff or a little no, bit? No, sir. No, sir. It's, uh, we're probably down, uh, we're total dollar amount, probably about 20000 which is just about ready to be committed uh, or obligated, rather. Do we have that money already then that's sitting here it's, in our we, account, but we just can't disperse it or pay the bill? No, sir. It's, we uh, purchase it and then the state reimburses. So it, it's strictly just getting everything uh, approved for what they're wanting to get to what they were allotted to get, make the purchase, and then get reimbursed for it. So, I don't know, it just seems like a long time, 07 and it was we're in 010. Time. And yes, what? sir, it was. What is it for? The, the, uh, one of the diff big changes were we took uh, $49,000 that the law enforcement had in PPE and they wanted it in communication. So we had to file paperwork back to the state to change because we're no longer part of District 6. And to change what that district had obligated us to get. And uh, they approved that finally. And then we then it's up to the law enforcement committee to give me the information of what they need under that communication side. They've done that, and we've made all the requests. Those have all gone out, but it hasn't been uh, received yet, so that money hasn't been spent, but it's been obligated. And I have a couple of things from the EMS side. So that's what's happening in 08 and 09s as well. Uh, on the 08, the primary thing we have is this tower, and then we have a few other things. The 09 hasn't, uh, that grant has just come back, that hasn't been put into our budget line yet. It yeah. will probably within a week, within this week. That's a 790, right? The 790 line. And and then we'll be able to start that process. Anybody else? There's a, there's a volunteer performance. Is that showed any interest in learning CPR? I may not CPR, but first responder. I've had some to contact me about. Well, we've Maybe. had we've had two or three classes on first responder, and they have been held at the OC, and uh, there's been a lot of a lot of interest in it. I know that uh, one of the county chiefs put on as a C as a first responder uh, instructor, mm -hmm. and I think they put that class. The whole Walk Hill had them come out and put the whole class on for their department. Right. So I, I mean, I'd like to see a lot of the, a lot of the departments get in that, and. Uh, to have their at least their first responder, because like I say, hopefully we'll, they'll start moving, getting getting more into education. All right. What if they get their first responder to dispatch on a dispatch them? They never used to. For what? Well, emergency medical situations for first responder. What they I mean, can there wasn't but a handful, of no. one or two. What they can do, call. Robert, is is they can get the they can use the same protocols that one of the other volunteer fire departments is using, and just work through the ambulance service. Yeah. Well, that's where I'm yeah. coming from. Well, so. what what we've done since I took over this job is, as uh, MVAs are, are, are paged out, they are sending the fire farmers to uh, most, well, just about all the, the 46 where there's injury involved. So they are getting there a lot quicker. And uh, they, you know, they could assist. But like I say, we've, we I've kind of talked it over and then a lot of the departments are buying extrication equipment where they can run back up and so that would be one of the things that I think EMS would like to see them have to be a part of that, that extrication process is to be able to have a little bit of patient care training you know in their background. Okay. I think if you let them participate.
anticipate they will. So what they volunteer. We are, well, it's a little premature, but we'll have a comprehensive report that discusses these very issues from another group of people that worked on this for a few months. So uh, we'll bring that to you soon, we hope. Anybody, any more questions on the report? If not, I'll entertain a motion on the report. So moved. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. That's the budget. Make a request real quick. It's not budget related. Do you think we got through this year and we got, it's getting warmer out? I was down on Laverne today and met with the fire chief down there. What's the chances of EMA sponsoring an event to get all of our municipalities and county agencies with our equipment and having some kind of summit or something to where these people, uh, they've got a $180,000 trailer I got to see today and it's very impressive, but uh, I was never aware of it. And I know we've now got a command center up and running and we, I would like to see us have something where we can put our resources together. At, you know, if we can rent a facility at Miller or what, or Walmart parking lot, but something that we get a day with the EMS, law enforcement, and fire, all three. The Vernon Fire Department is very proactive in a hazard material response. It's a sweet trailer. Yeah, it's it's $180,000. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. And, it's nice. and He's got I looked at and went through, through, through it today. And uh, Kind of looking at a, a sponsored public safety day. Yeah. And then we're all in it. We've got a new ladder in Smyrna, and, you know, um, I think y'all just ordered one. And Two. That, hadn't seen ours so it'd be a good day for get the bosses out and the others that get dirty and see what we got i think it's a very uh, possibility good yeah. possibility and maybe that same day i know it's been talked about I, that was one of the things talked about today is a, a materials list as far as what resources everybody's got that they could have before then or that day that you know what Smyrna's capabilities and murphy's capabilities and what we have inventory uh, that everybody can get for that. I think it's a good idea. <clears throat> well, we're going to get through this one and we can start the budget on it. Thank you. Yeah. Budget. Um, basically, uh, my budget, uh, I stayed within the, the mayor's wishes and the same as this year with two exceptions. Um, uh, one exception was 708. Um, we've been trying to get the radio systems and all installed in the EOC and the operations room. And uh, one of the final things there is a console system putting them all together and that would be about $35,000. Um, however, I can uh, reduce that and do part of uh, what we were looking at doing and do a monitor and a control box system, put monitor screens and a computer there and a control box and still be able to operate the radios um, not as elegantly as you can at the console, but yet more economically, and uh, I put an additional four thousand in there for that, making that line eight thousand. I'm mm -hmm. at yeah, seven oh eight. Question on, on that one, there. Would, would there have right now? You don't have, or do you have internet access in the EOC as far as yes. in, in the in the room? Yes. So if whatever agency comes in there, they can they have their, certain areas there. They can come in with their laptops and, and sit up and. Uh, the theory is yes. Now, when I say that, it's because we're having a lot of problems down there, and we've been working with OIT, and they're getting our stuff beefed up to uh, better that. Uh, we have had 30 computers working at one time in the training room, so you know it was partially uh, functional. Um, the other item is the server for the EOC. Um, it crashed right at the beginning of, the, of this physical year budget. And OIT and I have been nursing it along, uh, band-aiding it, and they have told me that 15000 is what it takes to replace that server, and it was a must. 
and uh, I, I went through it with the mayor, and I, I don't know if the mayor's talked to Brian yet, but OIT, uh, but we had left that in there because of the urgency of that. Um, it takes my staff and myself sometimes uh, anywhere from five to 20 minutes to open an email with an attachment on it and to, get, and to get into our server and try to bring up data that we have there, uh, good luck if it'll ha even work. So it, it's really been really hard on us and we're trying to get it done without an, uh, a lot of extra money. We've been patching it all through this, so far the six months of this physical year, but it is a major well, let me ask Problem. this question. All right, since that's the county EOC, uh -huh. that, we're going to be having emails that come in through that process if we have something, correct? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have problems with that now? Uh, if we, if we have another tornado or, or whatever. What we'll have to do is, is shut down part of that server and dedicate it to just that event and or put a external terabyte drive up so that we can receive that data. So, so it is a problem. So you're, what you're, are you t saying that you, we can operate efficiently in an emergency down there with this or not? On the server side, we are not efficient. We are not. We are functional, but far from being efficient. Is that the server that sent out the telephone call? Okay, so much. That's no, that's no, a that, They would do that in, in uh, okay. at, uh, the SO. He's put this in his budget for next year. We're going to try to, even though we've already used up all our OIT equipment budget, we're going to try to find a way to even do this now so we may not, it's not going to take us as long to do it. We're going okay. to move some money around. This will come out of development tax even when we do do it right. uh, potentially. So. I was just thinking if, if it's a problem now, if we have something. It's it's a priority we should have already addressed. We should have just gone ahead and spent the money, even though we're out of budget compliance now. But we're trying to work with Brian and find a way to move some money over and do this. Right. I'm sorry. Wait. That's the that's the only changes to it. So there are really no changes except that that has to be done, and we're going to even try to do it this year. So that may even come off the budget for next right. year. Any questions on his budget? Sure, along that next page on that seven million, you said you're not going to have the cost on that one for June first. That's correct. Is it going to be yeah. comparable or well, what's that's, your estimate? Again, government money, isn't it? That's, that's, that's federal money. Not really part of the uh, money out of our. That's grant money, hundred percent in. So uh, we just won't know what that will be until June first, when we cut off any expenditures, so we know how much is carried over to the next year. So basically what we're saying is you, you drop something and uh, you, somebody's not taking insurance anymore, I guess, or some, you dropped uh, some independent insurance. Oh, over there. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't well, know. Somebody yeah, could take it or? It, it's a, you know, we've made some changes in the tiers and, a, you know, going from okay. two to four. So it's it's a variation there on depending on which okay. employees so were in which level of that. So that's just the way it comes out. Okay. So in essence, what your budget is this year is about uh, sixteen thousand more, roughly, than last year. And all of that's basically that fifteen thousand dollars plus the four thousand. Everything yeah. else is is the same for all yes, practical sir. purposes. Entertain a motion. With all the questions. Let me make sort of a broad statement here about these budgets. These budgets are subject to further review and discussion, right. mm -hmm. and this, uh, you're basically endorsing the concept here that we've got this, the numbers are subject to some change. I right. want you to understand that as we go forward through the right. next several weeks and months. Motion approved. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Can you pass your general call? Have All right. Call the roll. Yeah. But I, I, let me, I don't, if you call a roll on this, you're going to hold us liable for this, for the penny, and this is, that's just not going to happen. No, you can okay. change the motion to allow for further review if needed. Well, I mean, it probably won't come back to public safety is what I'm mm -hmm. telling you to go to budget. I mean, it won't, if it varies from this in any, you know, substantial amount, we want to tell you about it, but 
there could be things well, that will happen. Well, I, and I don't think we all need to tie, tie your hands. Right. I mean, because there may be something else in there that might be, have to be cut or or, or added. You don't never yeah. know. And I, so it would be best, I guess, just go ahead and. Um, Okay, we'll do it that way. And... Well, I've got it's, so this is what bothers me. This is the first, they're the guinea pigs. They're the first ones out of about how many is there going to be? 50, 60 <laughs> different budgets around, some small and some large. And, you know, and there could be these little things all throughout all of them. And we're going to have to make decisions on them. So I do want to, I want to. Whatever we do, I want to leave it open so that we can it can be revisited. Wherever. Well, and I think and I, and I think because I mean, who knows what's going to be down when the numbers come in? The mayor probably, he, he, he's going to probably get with the department heads, and it may get worse. Mm -hmm. You know, it may get better. I don't see it getting better, but let's hope and pray that it's a possibility. But uh, I, I think this way we're not tying his hands as, as the county mayor and, and, and a work with the department heads. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Halls, report, and budget. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you, sir? Good. This is our January report <clears throat> on the intakes. Uh, January was low compared to previous January, so that's that's a good thing. Um, <coughs> got our adoption numbers there. <coughs> Out of the 472 incoming, we had 227 euthanized, 185 adopted, 35 reclaimed by owners. Adoption reclaim rate for the month of January was 47% with the euthanasia rate at 49%. Uh, got the number of people that visited the shelter looking for a lost or new pet. That's 2,140 for the month of January. On the next page is the number of requests for service. Yes, sir. Isn't the uh, adoption reclaim rate in it high, considerably higher than it's been? And that's just a monthly, and when we get yeah. to the year to date, you're going to see that's down. We just had a, a pretty decent month because of the fewer animals coming in and the number of adoptions and reclaims. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> On the next page is the calls received, uh, request for service 1,413. Uh, number completed was only 1,393 in January. We have officer mileage, also the breakdown of where those calls were coming in from as far as jurisdiction. On the fiscal to date, uh, since January 1st to the end of January, I'm sorry, July 1st to the end of January, we've received 5,123 total animals uh, impounded, had 1,169 adoptions, 3,392 animals euthanized, 328 reclaimed by their owners. Uh, you see the adoption reclaim rate year to date is at 29% with the euthanasia rate at 65%. And number of people that visited the shelter since July 1st, 14,809 people coming looking to adopt or looking for a lost pet. On the request for service, 10,095. And then the number completed 10,137, that was due to some carryover in the previous months. Those would be animals that are either relocated to wildlife uh, or to a vet's office. Um, wildlife, possums and things that are relocated. Uh, transfers, pretty much anything other than euthanasia. 
So adoptions and reforms. We don't need any more possums out in the eastern part of the <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> the next page is the bites. Those are tracked on a calendar year, so this would be the first month of this. We had 19 total bites uh, reported in January. Five of those animals were tested, no positives. On the other exposure, we had six reported and tested and one skunk that came back positive. Uh, that was out from the Constantine Drive area, a skunk that was wandering around uh, behaving unusually, and a resident shot it, and we picked it up and tested it. And then the following pages are just the graphs uh, comparison over the last few years. Uh, first one's the intakes. As you can see, January was lower than it has been the previous few years on intake. Uh, adoptions about midway. And then the activities are about average, a little bit high for January. The very last graph is the, this is the first set of numbers on the uh, number of vaccinations during 2009, and that's at 51,153. Mostly dogs, uh, cats were down by about three or 4,000 compared to last year. Any questions on her report? Motion is there a second? And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. No. Budget request? Yes, sir. Uh, budget amendment to move 11500 from building improvement 707, 6000 of that going into uh, maintenance and repair of buildings, and 3000 into medical dental services. We've had some. Uh, couple high ticket items as far as building repair. Uh, we had a hot water heater that went out and a uh, problem with one of the, uh, some duct work in one of the air conditioning units that caused a motor to burn out that we had to have replaced on the medical dental. That was uh, January 29th when my employees was transporting our inmate work crew back to the workhouse on the slippery roads and spun around. One of the inmates claimed to have hit his head. So our medical bill from the hospital ended up being a little over three thousand dollars so that's what that money is to cover and we're also requesting 2500 in animal food and supplies and then we're wanting to move 2800 from the supervisor uh, salary line to an attendance line and that's due to some turnover uh, to give us some adequate so that medical bill comes out of your budget and send that yes sir anytime order. there's an uh, inmate on our work crew that's injured we're responsible for those bills I guess we just probably reimburse and, or you just, you, you got to The bill the comes bill. to us. Okay. Okay. You've heard a request. You're very motion. Motion Second. No second. It's all roll. There's no discussion. Mr. Black. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Uh, did I let you finish or anything? Yes, sir. I did. Okay. I, I, didn't, I thought I may have butted in. <laughs> no, sir. You're I fine. I apologize, but I did. No, sir. Okay. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Farley? There were a few items I met with the mayor today. There are a couple items in his column that was changed compared to my request. Uh, in line 164, I had an increase uh, for two additional animal care specialist positions. Uh, one of the biggest complaints we receive at the shelter is the amount of time it takes for people to be able to adopt or reclaim pets and just that waiting time in the phones. Uh, so we were trying to get a couple additional full-time people. Um, let me let me make this statement just, just once. but. It will apply to others. It's not that maybe she doesn't need that, but we, I can't recommend any additional person to until we do at least two things. First, determine that we don't have to lay off or discharge right. people or change their pay of existing employees. Second, a priority would be certainly to uh, at least restore the step increases that we have, were not able to fund last year. I think those two and maybe some other things and look at the whole picture before we, right. before I can recommend any new positions. Right. I think we must do these other basic things initially. So 
that's a discussion we've had, and, right. and you'll see that maybe as, as others come through here as well. And, and that's understandable. Absolutely understandable. I do feel I right. did feel though I did need to ask for that uh, on behalf of my staff. But let me uh, go. F the next one is uh, look at line item one eighty nine, if you would please. That's where we've had previously we had forty three thousand four hundred seventy seven dollars there on an annualized basis to hire a veterinary. We have had no applications, and we've had that position posted for some. Three months, months now, now, three or four months. We still would like to achieve uh, obtaining a, a veterinary. We're going to try even now. So this will be subject to change again. We're going to repost that position at $52,000 just to see if we can get any applications. If we don't, this will come off completely, or we may try another approach of getting maybe a part-time person retired or something to work a couple of three days. So that's, this will probably change, but we just want to make you aware of where we are with this. Question on what if you do get some good applications at that point? Well, if we get some good applications, we're going to go try to go forward with this proposal. We do have enough revenue, basically, that we're now handing over for uh, adoption fees and uh, others that would pretty much offset this. But we just have not had any success getting anyone to, uh, to submit an application. Well, what does a, a veterinarian start at usually? I don't know. Tracy thought this veterinarian would start at about what she put down there, a new graduate, but we're, Someone it has young. not, it has not been field, enough dollars. Do it. When you throw in benefits on that 52,000, we're, we're another 25 to 30% in benefits on the full time person. Mayor, could you try to make some of the same argument about uh, hiring these? At least one of these positions, as far as adoption fees, no, mm -mm. no. The fees Probably he's not. referring to that uh, would offset our fees that we currently collect with our adoptions that we're paying out to other veterinarians to perform the service that this veterinarian would. Perform. We have about eighty thousand dollars in other fees that we could maintain and retain internally that's now going outside. In any event. That's the two main things that we've changed a couple of other outline items just a bit, travel and, and utilities, I believe, and the rest of it is pretty much the same budget that she has this year. Any questions? Yeah. Back up with the um, attendance you were talking about earlier and uh, your recommendation, I guess, that is that two? Entry level attendance that aren't that was her recommendation uh -huh. to add two internal mm -hmm. positions. Yes, sir. Okay. His number okay. there is a reflection of what my current current staff, staff is. Mm -hmm. is. Okay, but then what about down below again with the uh, wages and benefits? The benefits that would change. I didn't drop they or would, oh, they would drop accordingly. Okay, so we didn't drop those. We just made that yes. notation so you can see that with all the other benefits would actually change. <laughs> Those two positions you're asking for full time positions? Yes, at a pay grade two, step one. At a very low pay grade, of course, but anyway. Yeah, so. The veterinarian, do we know a way? Uh, I remember we kicked this around, gosh, I know since before I ever thought about coming here. But uh, it's going to make it, the animals healthier out there, we know that. Is it going to save us money from not having to bring in? Veterinarians, it, wasn't that part of what was coming, going to come out of this? Well, the money it's saving is, is easy. We're paying over to veterinarians yeah, for their good. services okay. for the adoption, but we're giving vouchers. And, uh, and also the time it takes employees to transport those animals to the various clinics that adopters are choosing. I guess that was my. I guess I'm saying I hope you can find a veterinarian because we kicked that around. I, I think I've been up here four years or something on this committee and it was it's been talking about him. Yeah, but I think we finally came to the point where it was talked about when, when we built it out there. Yeah. We're still trying. Anything else? No more questions. I intend a motion. Have you got an idea of what you're going to request from the municipalities this year? 
Yes, yeah, so there's a page towards the back. It should be the last page. Uh, the top section there is uh, current appropriations from the municipalities and then breakdown of what that average is per call. The bottom box is what I'm planning on requesting and what that cost would be. Tracy, I was looking at that for this one. Some of your volume, that rock <coughs> and smarter environment. Is that running historically what they have been? It seems kind of in the Laverne surpassing, all due respect to Laverne, they're surpassing smart as far as volume and rock growth. Too. Parkville's a pretty large zone. Uh, but if you figure uh, population, yeah, I'd say Smyrna and Laverne are pretty much uh, on track with what they've been previous. When you make this request to municipalities, do you, do you base that on what um, on your call volume from the yes. previous year? Is yes. <clears throat> I can see that looks to me like the number maybe maybe may be a little higher for but uh, smoke it on. We've had some difficulty uh, getting Laverne to increase uh, their appropriation as you can see currently. Uh, it's about six dollars a call. Yeah. That's what they're paying. Mm -hmm. It's probably lower now a couple of years, a year. Two ago, one mm -hmm. because they were less than 15. I know yeah, they were at nine uh, mm -hmm. two years ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. When you send that request, do you show that in comparison to Marcus Burles? They receive uh, oh. the number of animals that are coming in for their jurisdiction, number of calls we respond to, and generally, uh, I'll give them the last couple years along with that, uh, the number of calls in their area. Anybody else? Can I ask the question of one of our mathematicians around here? So if we go with what the mayor recommended, that's going to reduce what you recommended by roughly fifty thousand dollars. Really, be more than that when you put more the than that with the benefits. When you put the benefits, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So. That, what we're doing is we're looking at roughly 40, your budget's roughly 40,000 more than it was last year. Well, if you go with this, with her recommendation? With your recommendation. My recommendation. No, it's not that. With my recommendation is roughly the same budget except for what we've done to the uh, veterinary. Yeah. That's about another nine or ten thousand dollars plus benefits on that. that that's about the only difference that we have here so you're talking about about twelve or thirteen thousand dollars more and we've held everything else basically the same as what she has currently so i think from earlier we're talking about the only increases is the veterinarian and then um she had asked for the two additional employees, and the mayor's wanting to wait on that until he figures out other alternatives. So basically, we've got a status quo budget recommendation from the county mayor from, from last year. I thought he just said it was 14,000 more. But with that better area. Area. Yeah. 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 I said, well, basically, status quo. We had to bet it, it would increase it. My current budget was with the veterinarian for only half a year. Without the veterinarian, it would be a decrease. Oh, yeah, definitely. Roughly, it's just pretty much the same. The 10 years of budget. Yes, sir. What's the will of the committee? All my approaches were here. What was the budget? Was the mayor's recommendation? Oh, is there a second? Second. So we got a motion. What's your motion to approve the mayor's recommendation without the veterinarian increase? Well, I think he's saying he's I said without. 
Oh, oh, that's easy. Okay, so what you're saying is not increasing the, the veterinarian. Right, I mean, if, if we come back and there's somebody that tries and it's in our price range, I mean, I think we look at that. But, you know, this is a number I can look at and I know what it is without that in there. So if, if it comes back and they advertise it, the person comes back willing to take it at $52,000, they come I mean, back and ask for money. I think that we need to talk about. Because it couldn't save us some money for what it's costing us now. That's what I want to look at. Okay. Who's your second? Who's second of that? I do. You? Okay. Our right, discussion. Well, even at fifty-two thousand, it's it saves money even at that that dollar amount. Because uh, we've got what did I say, Tracy? She's got a piece of paper back there. It's about eighty thousand dollars. It's about how many dollars we we've got here to be able to fund that. So what? Discussion. Here and now, it's all right. Read the motion. No, this is the motion. Is all. all right, that's right. Approve the mayor's recommended budget without the veterinarian increase. Everybody on the same motion. Okay. Anybody have any questions on the motion? I wanted to ask a better question on the estimated total revenue for next year from your donations and all. And I'm sure that's basing it on what you've gotten in the past here. Uh, so what do you figure it's going to be this year? We're over halfway through. Do you, do you, have, you ought to have some concrete figures for, through December, right? And to date, it was at uh, 15897 and change. Is what we've collected so far is fiscal. 15,897? Yes, sir. And we're estimating, well, I, I was talking about everything with you, your reclaims and adoptions and all that. Uh, is, I mean, I'm wondering if we got, if, have we gotten half of the 452,000 that you're estimating for next year? It is going to be close. Our adoptions usually the springtime is when we're going to start having an increase mm -hmm. in our adoptions. Uh, the rabies licensing is going to be very close based on the first numbers. Mm -hmm. The donations were already just a couple thousand away from what I've estimated there so far this fiscal. <clears throat> on the reclaims, this was figured at a first time impound. It doesn't include any reclaims where we've had uh, second and third time offenders. Mm -hmm. If you look at the monthly report year to date. Okay, you're at 328 reclaimed. I think I had predicted 550 for the total for the year. Uh, some of these 328 are going to be second and third time offenders. So that's going to be a 50 or $100 reclaim mm -hmm. fee versus the 25 um, on the adoptions for 1169, it's going to be close as whether or not we hit that predicted 2300. Okay. Well, my only, the only concern I got right now is if we're going to advertise this position at 52,000, <coughs> and that's what I, I'm hearing that we're, our, the plan is. Is that right, Mayor? Well, we wanted to try that to see if we would generate an African. And I mean, my, my concern with the motion is that. If we're going to do that, I think that we ought, it ought to be 52 in the budget. So if, if the motion stands, I mean, that's that's going to be the reason I'm fixing to say no. Because I think if we, you know, with all due respect, and if, if we're going to advertise that, I think that's what needs to be in the line item. So. Tracy, how do you feel? Well, I took you think we'll get one at 41000 At 41 was it 43? 43. It was 43. We've advertised for three or four months so far. We've had no applicants. Three or four. Not a single applicant as of yet. And how much money are we taking? Are we fees wise? Are we giving out to other veterinarians for this service? That's going to be eighty thousand dollars. Pretty close, yeah. That's, that's uh, our budget determined. Three fifty-seven is the line that we pay the adoptions and. Reclaims and everything, uh, the vaccinations and the spay neuters from um, last year we spent 70000 
for those services so far. Uh, our six month was at 27,114. And that was the total bill that each one submitted. You know, they didn't charge you separately somewhere for medicines and things like that. It was all, you'd get a bill for this and it'll have items on it. And these, these fees are. Uh, Predominantly just the vouchers. That's right. a spay neuter voucher for thirty-two dollars, or a rabies voucher for eleven dollars. It's that kind are of being a, sent it's in kind of a vets. fixed fee. So that we they take that voucher to the vet, and they for a, if the thirty-two dollars each, and the vet honors that voucher and does the procedure, and we pay them thirty-two dollars. We pay that, and if they're if the bill's more than that, the adopter is responsible for whatever that difference right. is. Mayor, we've had that money allotted or sitting in that account at forty-three thousand now for since the physical year of well, last we, year. We right? just had it in for half of the year. We budgeted half of that for. So it started in January. Started this mm -hmm. January, so we have saved whatever money we haven't spent starting this January. Because if we post it tomorrow and we get somebody the beginning of next month, we got four months of salary up until July. So this, I'm. Going along with your point here, if we don't allot this in there, we've got we're going to cover it for four months, and then well, the current year budget has twenty-one, almost twenty-two thousand dollars in it for that purpose right. that we haven't spent any of that for the last yet. four months. Yeah, we if we had some money tomorrow, yeah, we, we'll have the money this year, but uh, we'd have to get approval on the higher base pay. I mean, I'm just thinking if if, if we're going to advertise it for a certain amount of money, we ought to show a good faith effort and put it into our budget line item. Instead of when it comes to the process, this person, when he or she comes about, you know, it may, hopefully it may not get bogged down into the commission process, but it, it could or could not. I just think we need to, if we're going to advertise for something, I think it ought to be that amount, that amount of items. I don't, I don't disagree with that, but if you're going to do that, we're talking basically a salary here. Now, it's going to cost something to put a veterinarian in place. You'll have to have an autoclave to start off with, sterilize surgical equipment. You'll have to have surgical equipment, <coughs> operating tables, everything else. So you're talking about a whole lot more money than what you're talking about revenues just well, to be able to set somebody up at a minimum over there. And that's assuming that we don't worry about getting an x-ray machine or things like that on the set up with. So, I mean, that's why I say, you know, we get somebody in there that's well and good, and I think that you know it's in our best interest to do that. But you don't have a clue what it's going to cost you to do that yet. But we have that in yeah. there. We yes. have yeah. we got the salary in there. Well, we no, the no, no. Seven ninety. We have sixty-five thousand dollars in there too. That's for the renovation. To take care of the renovation, and uh, she's mm -hmm. going to be able to buy the equipment. Out of for donated 50, money. Out of uh, out of some. Donation monies that she's used that she's been able to accrue over the years. Okay, I was looking at the blank right beside that. Yeah. Under your recommendation, it doesn't have anything in it. Anything no, left? Blank I didn't change that. Mean, I didn't yeah. change that. It's still in that sixty-five thousand is still in there, and the fifty thousand is still. In there. I mean, that'll be a, that'll be scratching the surface there. I don't know yeah. what an autoplay runs nowadays, but that by itself. Is, you know. Well. We've chosen not to spend any of that money or do any of that work till we get somebody to help advise us of what we need to put in there. We need a professional that's to help us design the layout and the equipment that we need to, to install. And we're not going to do any of it until we find somebody. No, right. And, I, and if I was a veterinarian and just got out of school, I wouldn't take one for $43,000 a year. I don't know if I'd take it for $50,000. Well, we don't know. You, you don't know. Huh? You would. If you didn't get a good job, no worries. <laughs> and benefits. Yeah, if you were going to have to buy a bill there. <laughs> Still looking for that hungry vet there. Yeah. Well, and depending on whether getting through vet school will include a lot of loans. Yeah. I made my point. Do you either agree or disagree? <laughs> all right. All discussion? Is there a motion? The motion is on the floor and, and, and a second. Okay. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Um,
two two no's, right? Mm -hmm. I heard seven. Eyes. So let me let me get a quarter. You said aye. <laughs> we'll do it again. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed. No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the seven eyes. My seven. interpretation of this is correct. If we advertise for this position, we can't make an offer till we come back and get yeah. start this through the process of approving whatever. This fifty-two thousand dollars. That's the way I understood the motion. Is that correct? What I understood, and I said all along, I mean, if it's your intent to go ahead and advertise for that, well, I would advertise for it. I, I don't have any problems with getting it, but I'm just saying we don't have it in there, so, so why put it in there right now? So I mean, if we get somebody to take it for that, bring it to us, and we'll go with it. Not trying to be disrespectful. That, that's kind of what I was saying. I mean, if, if we're going to do it, so put it out there. I mean, we don't know we're going to do it, or somebody's going to do it for we'll, us. We'll, 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 right now, we're, going, we're, we're saying we're going to do it. The motion passed for 43000 right? And we're, we're, no. not, we're going to pull the advertisement at 43000 It's not working. So now, the only question. Tracy and I have is, are we going to put one out there at 52? We weren't comfortable making any more than that. We're not sure that it'll get someone, but we thought we owed it to to what you'd already encouraged us to do about getting a vet to put it out there to see if that would attract a, a person. Well, right now, I think they need guidance on how much they need to advertise this, this for. Yeah, if you want to try 53, I don't mind making a motion for us to allow him to post that position at 53,000. 52 is what we 52. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, is that a motion? Yeah. All right, is there a second? I'll second. second. Okay, motion in a second. All right, discussion. Yeah, how are we going to pay for it? Well, we, the, bu the budget this year is... Included. We're going to put it, are you say we're going to put it in the budget. Well, how are we going to get it for the budget? We're going to pay for it two mm -hmm. ways. First of all, it's already in the budget, and we'll have enough money in this year's budget to handle that through well, the course yeah. of three more months. Well, yeah, <coughs> that part. Secondly, we're going to pay for it by not sending these vouchers over to outside veterinarians that in total about $80,000, we're gonna have that pool of money to pay for this. Okay. So, we'll, we'll so she's not, gotta get, he or she's gotta get online first. Yeah. There were, so veterinary not, services will see it dropped in the budget. Well, it'll, it'll basically see a net zero at $52,000. It would be in the same neighborhood of what we're sending out. So we should not have to appropriate any new money to make this happen at that level. That's the reason we sort of picked the fifty-two thousand. <clears throat> we got the expenses now with with Going a, a number of veterinarians. We're we're trying to bring it down to one veterinarian in house. Mm -hmm. But the number of veterinarians only was at a fixed fee from our payment. The rest went from the reclaimers. And we had no benefits in that. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But if you have eighty thousand dollars budgeted in the, like right now, for what's going out now, and you have a, a, a salary of fifty-two thousand, your benefits are going to be roughly twenty-five thousand. That so you're actually still under the eighty thousand dollars that you already had budgeted in, in the previous. Year. Is that correct? That what we would collect. Yes, what we currently are collecting, it would go towards those fees. So basically, we're going to get an in-house veterinarian. What we're paying out now. Is the way I'm understanding it. That's, that's correct. I got a bird here and I got two birds over there. I take this one. And it, I know for one thing, sales tax is down this year over last year. I'm looking where well, we could, we're going to get it. But it's yeah. all I'm saying is it's basically a wash. It, it, you either you either got ten bed names over here in this hand or you got one bed name in this hand that's in the house. It's the same money. That's right. It's the only thing I'm saying. That fifty thousand, we don't. That's that's a one-time appropriation for equipment and so forth. And then next year, that would, that would come that would be lower, right? Yeah, and that money, she's going to. She has some money in hand that she's received over the years for donations that, that we got from independent sources. That's not that's not county money that she's going to use for that. And she'll continue to get some of that as we need to improve and enhance the equipment too. All right, so we got a motion on the floor to advertise for $52,000. Got a motion and a second, is that correct? Okay. All right. 
If there's no other discussion on the motion on the floor, I'm going to go ahead and call for questions. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, drug court. Report and budget. It doesn't get any easier. <laughs> no. Listen here is probably going to be a little bit. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Why do you say that? I just. I'm easy to get one. Uh, <laughs> ESP, yeah, yes. yeah, I would like to remind you that um, I've brought almost three million dollars in new money into the county over the last ten years. Just in case you forgot, <laughs> the grants and what have you. So I'm trying to decide what I am handing up here. Okay, Robert, you and I sound like we both need to be home. Yeah. I've got cough syrup in that little green bag if you need some. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am presenting plan A and plan B to you tonight. And these are both, we've gone over this with the mayor. Two or three times. Yeah. And the judge. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce Angie Hostetler. She's my assistant director. I'm okay. sorry. All right. These are the wonderful people I meet with every month. So, so let me explain, okay, because it is confusing. If you look on your revenue sheet, you have a, a plan A and a plan B. Plan A is actual realized, more or less within a few dollars, revenue that I anticipate next year for drug court. Okay, this is all revenue that I think we can count on. So that's a hundred. In addition to that, now, we, this DUI treatment fund heretofore, previous years, it's had a substantial reserve that we have drawn <coughs> down. We have reduced that number to zero. There's nothing else to draw down in reserve. That's how she's been funding her budget even this year. The ending fund balances have carried themselves forward. It allowed us to do what we were doing, mm -hmm. but that is that is gone. Mm -hmm. This is now reoccurring money, the 51.5. That's what will come in next year. Come in next year. So mm -hmm. we don't have anything that's left in that bucket anymore to draw from. Okay. So that comes up to 176500 So if you look um, at Plan A right behind you, that's the budget for Plan A. Uh, basically what that allows for is me and Angie, and we can only serve 25 participants. Um, I would have to lay off six people, six people, and um, we would have to contract out for our treatment services, our therapy services. So the 25 participants that are current, would currently be in drug court would be incarcerated <coughs> at the jail for a minimum of 200 days, we look at. This is just a minimum, and that would cost $175,000 instead of being in drug court. And you know that drug court is a better deal. In addition to all the other things, child support, taxes, you know, all the other things, driver's license fees, what have you. So that's, that's bare bottom but budget. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. Let's go back over it one more time. You said sure. With the revenues that you know you have, is this plan A, which is 176500 Correct. And that's going to entail laying off six people. Mm -hmm. And that also entails sending these, uh, these court offenders back into the jail system. Well, we would, we would complete with what we have, what we have in the program by June. In fact, we're, we're having a big graduation in May, so we can we would get those numbers down to where we would only be serving 25. But that means by not being able to serve 50, 25 people in the court system would have to go to jail and serve their, a minimum, a minimum of 200 days. Now that's not talking somebody that's violated four times and has to serve their 1129. That's not a felon who actually has six years. I mean, we really looked at the bare minimum and that's $175,000. So 
So you're not getting child support. You're not getting any sort of taxes out of that. You're not getting restitution. You know, you're not getting probation fees. You're getting nothing out of those 25 people. So the difference between the plan A and plan B, okay. 316. They said got to be yet. Yeah. They haven't gotten to be yeah. yet. Are we done with plan A? Everybody understand plan A? Well, you still have an OCJP grant. Right. We still have that. That's, um, but that's, that's all you've got left out of the grants. Yeah. That we normally yeah, I've run, I've um, you know, I never know what's gonna come up in the future. You never know. We're looking at some reentry stuff right now, but this this is something that the state has given us every uh, year since two thousand three and, and hopefully I hope that increases someday too. I don't know if it will, but Okay, any other questions about that? Let me ask this. If, mm -hmm. if, if, if you were to have to lay them people off, mm -hmm. and what services are going to be basically cut if you have to lay those people off? Well, we wouldn't have a therapist in house anymore. Um, we wouldn't be able to do male drug screens. We'd have to contract that out too. So we'd have to contract out all our therapy services. We'd have to hire a male to come in and watch our men pee or not take men, one or the what, other. What, what would that? What would that cost to have to do that? Well, I don't really know because I haven't really um, well, She's got $30,000 in, yeah. in this Part A for yeah. contracted services. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's realistic or not. I think, quite honestly, I think the quality of the program will be drastically hurt. I mean, drastically. Angie and I are good, but I don't know if we're that good. You know, even, even back when it was just the two of us, basically, we still had a whole team of people that were providing services on the outside, if you remember, we had VI, you know, that was providing MRT classes and all our uh, probation services and all our drug screens and all that. Um, you know, we won't have any of that anymore. We won't have a, you know, anybody answer the phone. You know, if Mr. Daniels comes over and wants to say hey to us, there might not be anybody at the door to greet him like there was today. <laughs> so. I mean, just I think the quality of the program would be horrible, to be honest. Okay, okay, that's it on plan A. Okay, plan B. Plan B would be that same drug court grant, still all those fees that we um, get from the convictions and everything, and the program fees, still that 51500 from the reoccurring DUI grant. But if we don't cut as many people, we can continue to um, get the DUI grant, which we get now. We get $60,000 a year now for the DUI grant. Angie and I would not be able to support that grant by ourselves. But if we were able to keep another person on, then we could accept that grant, okay, and do that program. And then um, an $80,000 out of the county general fund for a total budget of $316,500. That, with that, we could serve, because it would be the two programs combined, the DUI and the drug court program combined, we would be able to serve up to 65 participants and we would only have to cut um, two and a half people. All right, and that's asking for an additional eighty thousand dollars from the from the county, county. Mm -hmm. out of the county fund. Which, if you look at that, one hundred seventy-five thousand, you would have had to spend to send them out to jail. <clears throat> eighty thousand is looking better. And that's still that's still laying off two and a half people. Yeah. Well, you base that cost to incarcerate them on twenty-five people, right? And if you had you had 60, <coughs> you said you, you estimated 25 with the first plan, so you're actually 35 people. So it would actually be more than 175,000. It would, if you had Well, your DUIs don't have to go to jail as long either. They're either usually 48, 45, and 120, I think. But that would be with, you know, they would, they would, would have they to go to work out. They would work center or to yeah. jail. The work center. They would, that's not true either, because that's just on conviction. But these people have usually violated their probation and have to serve right. their sentence, so they would still but be... But the DUI people are... They don't are second their enough. probation? No, no, they're second they're enough. They're still going to be incarcerated. Right. So there's going to be some... Incur some cost yeah. through, through incarceration. Yeah. 
how uh, many days out of the year is the jail full? Is it? It's running eighty five. Right now they're not packed full. So we got fixed costs there, no matter whether they go in or not. Mm -hmm. But still, you're 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 leaving some vacancies open. I get. Well, I know what you're going to say. Well, there already are vacancies, but mm -hmm. we're even making more vacancies. I mean, those twenty five spots will get filled up anyway. Because you're figuring thirty five dollars. Actually, we're not getting our cost back. We're figuring thirty five dollars uh, for state well, prison. The cost is more like fifty dollars. Yeah. Plus. yeah. Yeah. So it's you, even more. Going, uh, <laughs> you don't. You wouldn't. Practically, you're not going to save the whole fifty or the whole thirty-five. But the bottom line is this: this program works, and most of you have attended these graduation ceremonies. And I don't know. We don't know exactly what the return rate in this system is, but we will know though we after will the know. evaluation is complete. But I, I'm, I'm convinced personally that. The, we're rescuing many, many lives mm -hmm. in this process. And I really think this will be the first time we put any county money into it. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe it would be a disservice to <clears throat> the citizens of Rutherford County if we didn't make some investment. I think $80,000 of this money, it gets a lot of money, but uh, it's, yeah, you can prove that it probably would save that many dollars or more. But at the last stop, we got to invest this money it's a it's a something that we invest in the lives of people that need much help and i really think it's something we really should seriously consider part b at a minimum and quite honestly we are the only treatment program in town anymore pathfinders has quit um the guidance center only has a program for women we are the only treatment program in rutherford county anymore how many years have we been to the, no, I'll second that. And, and I, I want to say too, I mean, this is simple math. I mean, yes, it's very important that these lives are involved. And I mean, that's why I've always been interested in this. But it is saving us money by going ahead and keeping us out here and keeping the in, inmates out of jail. And we've got to stop that. So I'm, I'm going to be fair by doing this. We have most of the second for the plan B. Let's ask a question. How many years have we been in? This is the year number 10. It's number our 10. anniversary. So $80,000 over 10 years. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a pretty good amount of return for you. And I brought in almost $3 million yeah, exactly. of new money. And I'm bringing in a conference in December that will obviously create some revenue. Right. Might even cover the $80,000. How much do we get from the state? Uh, these grants or the states, are they all federal grants? No, no, no. Not anymore. These are this is state, state money. The, um, the OCJP, that's Office of Criminal Justice Programs, they get um, $5 out of every $75 that's collected over at the courthouse. Um, they get $5 of that. That goes to the state and it accumulates from across the state. The clerks get their share of it and then we end up getting about $64 out of it, $65. That's what that drug court fees at $65,000 is, okay? okay. But then the state, with their $5, they get that all together, and every year they look at that and spread that out amongst all the drug courts. And now they're certifying drug courts, so it's reaching the point now that if you're not certified, you're not going to get money. So I think we're going to see some changes very soon, and hopefully that's why I thought that fee might go up a little bit, actually. So that's, that's drug court-generated money that they're giving back to us. Well, what always bothers me is... When's the state going to cut something else out or change it mm -hmm. and use that money for something else? Because well, we've way, already seen it this the year. The way this so. law is written, they cannot. This can never go back into general fund. Now, they can change the law, but they haven't yet. And I can assure you, I'll get all 50 participants up there lobby against it, too. I didn't say that word, to fight against it. <laughs> all right. We got a motion and a second. Very real quick. Yes. What's your recidivism rate? It well it depends on how you look at it. I know that's a terrible thing to start off with. It is about thirty percent, which is third. Well, the national is about sixty-seven percent. Okay. How they went through last year. Uh, oh, Angie would know. She did the state report. How many did we serve last year? I want to say fifty something. Fifty-three or four. We've had a total of one hundred and thirty-eight graduates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How come you can't get more to go through? Because it's hard. 
They can't. They just they don't make it. it. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. They're in for the wrong reasons. Addiction is is. I mean, it's serious. What other? I mean, if you're if you're if somebody's watching this tonight and they've got mm-hmm. a son or a daughter or a father that's dealing with addiction, mm-hmm. alcohol, drugs, whatever, and it's rampant. It's rampant mm-hmm. out there. It yeah, is. I think society doesn't pay attention to it, but it is. Um, what resources do they have? Well, that's unfortunately there aren't very many. Um, you know, you can get assessed by the the court. You know, the court will get an assessment done for you, but then what happens after that is pretty much up to you. Um, like I said, there's not any, you know, major resources in Rutherford County other than us. It's, it's sad. Or if you do private counseling, they're going to want insurance money. You know, we take people who don't have insurance. Yeah. So. We all probably heard me brag on my little brother that graduated from DA agency um, several months ago. I did not know that. Yeah, he just, yeah, I'm yeah. Real, real proud of him. But, but I, anyways, him and I talk about these issues a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, he was telling me how bad the problem has gotten. I mean, he said Atlanta is now the drug capital. Oh, really? My, um, this Mexican drug cartel, mm-hmm. this stuff's coming up here. Mm-hmm. And, and it just seems like you're not really addressing the, the issue and the root of the problem sometimes. And it's just <coughs> band-aid on a band-aid. And it's, mm-hmm. you see this problem that's just huge. And it's getting it's just growing. I mean, he, he told me they made a bus of a day of three million dollars. They wow. made, I would say three million dollars in cash. But you know, the, we're looking at the numbers here. But one thing we don't see is those lives. Mm-hmm. Somebody mentioned that that father, that mother that's being taken out of the, the house where they're in prison. And mm-hmm. the house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't mean to beat up on the county, but I've seen some money that spent up here that I think they could have been spent in a better way. And I think it needs to be spent on things like this. And it, it's pitiful that we're seeing, just like Lieutenant Slam is mm-hmm. at least trying to get these guys yes. into some programs yes. and stuff. And, um, you know, these are our, our neighbors. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody really, you know, wants to really address it, but it's um, it's out there. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, it's getting, I'm just, the things I'm saying, it's just getting, it's getting worse and worse. It is. I agree. But what are we doing as far as getting that information out on with OIT as far as the television. Well, of course, we do have a web presence, and that's you know available to anybody. I think everybody in the world must have come through our website because we get some really crazy phone calls. But um, that is also something that the Support Foundation, that is our 501c3, that's one of their um, missions is to get the word out. And I think by having that rally for recovery every year, I think they try to get the word out because that creates a lot of publicity. I'm hoping that um, people will take note of our 10 year anniversary and we'll, we'll get some stories out about us that way. I hope when the conference comes, we'll get some stories. So I think we're doing as much as we can other than you know the staff telling everybody they know and all the attorneys in town and all, I mean, I mean everybody's very supportive of us. Have you thought about Telebuzz as one of your graduations? I have, but we have the confidentiality problem. We would have to get every graduate to sign a waiver. Well. That might be something we can try it because I think people see that it brings it home to mm-hmm. them. I see agree. how the families are I directly agree. affected in our communities. Affected, so, and those <clears> testimonial <throat> speeches at the graduations mm-hmm. are very powerful, they are. So, if you Google Rutherford County mm-hmm. addiction, your website's going to pop up. If you no, if you do Rutherford County Drug Court, will pop I'm up. I'm just saying, is your search is your is your website set up to where it's going to show up pretty good in the search engines? Oh, I don't know. I've never tried addiction. Have you? I'll have to ask Amy Brian, about that. He could probably help. Yeah, me yeah. I'll have to ask about that. All right. Got a motion to second on the floor. All in favor of the motion to say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Now I have one little, just tiny baby one for you. It's the my ARRA grant. Here it is. You have to approve this as well. All of his grant money. Yeah. This this is the evaluation that's being done, um, and we should by June I hope we'll have the recidivism outcome, and then next year we'll have the cost benefit analysis. So I'm a year behind. Should have had all that this year. But this is, this is the grant we don't approve for the budget. Oh yeah, yeah. This is just the budget for the grant. Motion approved. Thank you. Yeah, Who's yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, okay. seconded? Oh, okay. 
All right. Motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, y'all. I appreciate it. Appreciate your support. All right. Juvenile detention. Robert, you want some cough medicine? <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, okay. <coughs> <coughs> okay. okay, gentlemen, I have uh, our monthly report. That should be the first thing that you have in front of you. I uh, don't think there's anything uh, that really needs much attention. Of course, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you've got. I have four counties that are currently uh, we're waiting on uh, checks from. Robertson County, Lincoln County, Coffee County, and Franklin County. Uh, we don't foresee any issues with getting that. They're just uh, in the mail, so to speak. There's no questions on the report. I don't entertain a motion on the report. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. I don't entertain a motion to say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, you do have my budget in front of you. Um, if you want to just uh, skip to the uh, second page, which is what everybody's interested in, uh, the budget that's in front of you is uh, slightly more than $5,000 less than it was last year. Um, I would like to say um, that I did have uh, some discussion with the mayor and the finance director uh, regarding what I would like to do with this $5,000, just so that my budget would be a, a, a wash. Uh, I've got a, a part-time employee that I would like to make full-time who's currently already on insurance, and to get her full-time would be just about this amount. Uh, that I have left over, and so then my budget would uh, run uh, just about the same as it was last year. That would be $147 less still with that employee going full time. Mm -hmm. And I think I just go back to what you said one time. This, this falls in the same category before. I think it's a reasonable uh, request, but until we are sure that we don't have to, I guess you could say, change compensation or lay off people or not have the ability to pay our uh, those step increases that we had to leave them behind we just uh, would like to not make a definite final uh, conclusion on that yet any questions on her budget i'll make a motion to approve her request Motion is there a second. second and a second. All right. Questions? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And ambulance service report budget. He's here. He's here. I, I seen him earlier. He may be in the green room. <laughs> hey Mike. Good, you doing all right? Yeah, Give me one more. Okay, I got it. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, whenever you're ready. We made 1,665 calls last month. Average response time is 8.1 minutes, 18 corners calls. We billed $1,033,030. Roughly 423,881. Uh, year to date, that puts us at $3,043,759, and that projects to $5,217,872 for the year.
I have insurance write-offs 272,833. <clears throat> Collection agency write-offs 61,472. And discount for workers' comp and those kind of things of $1,727. We had uh, some ambulance shutdown. Christiana was down for seven hours and transport was down for 12 hours. Blackman, three and a half hours. Stonecrest, three and a half. And Smyrna West, two hours. Salem, one hour. NTSU, 1.5 hours. And Vernon, two hours. <clears throat> the big table is uh, cost per mile. It's just an ambulance uh, vehicle cost. We had uh, one ambulance service breakdown. It had to do with a fuel pump. And <clears throat> drove a total of 32,582 miles. We also had 332 out of zone calls. <coughs> Next page are services and training. Right. You can kind of see those. Reacting was very busy. That's, of course, that's what they do. But, uh, they, we also covered all of the MTSU basketball games. And the sort team, as usual, is involved in quite a few different things. Speaking of the water rescue, that actually happened out in my district. And, um, I have um, been in contact with Mike Williams pushing <coughs> to try to get a guardrail out there so that won't ever happen again. And uh, I talked to one of the ladies that's been talking to the, the young lady's mother. And uh, she's she's not out of the woods by no means, but she's doing better. I was glad to hear that. And uh, it was a big effort for a lot of people out there that. A job well done, and, and that family is very appreciative. Yeah, they have, they've been in contact with you. Yeah. I'm not sure, I haven't seen it yet, but Captain Spence was just telling me a, a little bit earlier that our highway department is out there bringing rock and trying to put some, I guess, some cur some shoulders there yeah. in some of those places. So they've started the yeah, process of making some improvements for the safety of. I talked to Mike Williams today, and they. It's, I think it's a four foot uh, shoulder that he's putting on there. And then uh, the board meeting is March the 1st, and it's 7 o'clock in the morning. And the board is hopefully going to uh, take some action and get something going out there. I know I'm fixing to fill that place full out there on March the 1st of a lot of uh, people out there and a lot of students from Riverdale High School that went to school with her and parents, hopefully. So, um, go board, get ready. But we're coming. <laughs> I lost my pee. The next page is response time and report. The average response time was 8.1 minutes. Um, and you see the various number of calls and response times for all of the different ambulance stations. <clears throat> the transport team did 45 admission transfers and they also answered 52 911 calls. So for a grand total of 1,665 calls. Next page is the uh, number of calls broken down by commissioner districts. and also the origin of the transport team calls. Following the following page is the same information but for year to date. And we have uh, several thank you notes.
Do they have any questions on from Michael and Paul? If not, I entertain a motion and report. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> motion carries. I have most of the the changes in the, this budget highlighted there for you so that you can see what the increases were. Um, as you'll notice in the second to last column, there are some columns with increases, <coughs> slight increases, and some with decreases. Um, I'm not sure how you want me to do it. You want me to just go line item by line item? If you just hit the, the if it's if it's the same, I'd leave it alone. If it's decreases or increases. increases. The first one there is uh, 105 supervisor directors. There's an increase of $9,159. That um, we replaced uh, two of our station managers with long-term employees. So it was <clears throat> we haven't added any, any people to it. It's just simply that they're they fall in different um, peg peg grade. So that increased that line item, but it also helped decrease line item 133 because we've had several people, in addition to those two station managers that were promoted, we've had several long-term people that have left, and we've replaced those with people that start at the bottom. So that's a decrease of 74,390. <clears throat> Same thing for dispatchers, which is the next one down, uh, and that's a decrease of 7,247. Longevity pay was increased by $1,100, and that's just a function of uh, another year. <clears throat> the Social Security and the retirement, uh, those are going to go down just simply because the salaries went down. The employee insurance went up 133000 and I think I heard the mayor on TV in there. I was watching them ago. It kind of explained that. Uh, we just had a, a lot of folks in our organization chose the higher one, so that, that's why that increases there. Not much I could do about that. Uh, disability in, uh, insurance went down, employer Medicare went down, and those two things are functions of the salaries. <clears throat> Contracts with private agencies is up $3,530. That's primarily due to Medtronics or Physio Control who service our life packs. Has they increased their uh, contract by nineteen hundred and twenty dollars, and then we added the receiving station, which is the station that receives the EKGs that are transmitted from the field, put it under that contract too. That's a thousand and ninety-three dollars. So that's why that went up as much as it did. Pest control, we added thirty-six dollars to that just because it, for some reason, we're thirty-six dollars short. <coughs> Under other contracted services, this has to do with primarily with the, the Tennessee State Licensing Division decided to increase ambulance service license fees by $4,300. And, and also, they are now requiring that we uh, license our dispatch center. So that's why that went up. State of Tennessee. What was the reason for that? They wanted some money. They're hurting for money. The only other increase is, is I put three hundred thousand dollars in there to uh, purchase two new ambulances. When was the last time we purchased any ambulances? Um, we didn't buy any last year. The year before that, we didn't buy any, but we got one on the grant. We had a grant on one from Christy Houston. Right. Who were those? You put in for one from somebody about every yeah, year, got, don't you? Yeah, we got turned down on the last. Mm -hmm. 
the, the total increase is $349,214. 133000 of that is due to the insurance, and 300000 of it is due to the uh, motor vehicles. So if we hadn't had those, it would actually have been a decrease. If you look at it, you, the, the two amateurs are $300,000, only $49,000 increase, and then you had the, the, the insurance at 133 so you, that shows you got quite a bit of decreases throughout your budget there. Yeah. And there, there will be probably four other line items that will be reduced for a total of about $62,000 more. What were they? Well, communication, evaluation and testing, uniforms, and uh, other charges. That is due to just. It's, we believe that based on what he's currently. Uh, Experiencing this year that we can uh, we can budget those numbers lower, and yeah. that has and that has nothing to do. Those line items have nothing. They to had, do. He had put them on his piece of yeah. paper yet. There are, uh, and I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. We, the only the only thing is, like I told the mayor when I turned the budget into him, I'm a little bit nervous about our computers, especially our dispatch computers, yeah. and um, I, I encourage him to to help Brian out in his. It's fun. Pretty sure Brian has enough money in his budget to take care of some of these technology issues. Well, where were you at on the damages? Is that something you look at, uh, Mayor Burgess? Sir, have you looked at these two ambulances? Well, we requested. Well, yeah, he really, with the mileage they're running, we need to be buying at least one ambulance every year, maybe two. So we've not bought any for two years. <clears throat> it's just time that we put two new ambulances in service now. We'll probably pay for those out of development tax, which is very limited right now, but we'll, that's probably where the funds will come from. Well, I know in the past we hadn't put that directly in this line. I, was like, I thought uh, we had separated that out. So well, I don't know says. whether, yeah, you're asking, I don't know whether Lisa wants us to put it on this form or, or put it somewhere else, but when we actually budget this, it won't be budgeted as part of county general. It'll be coming out of the development tax. She will identify specific things like this and like some things in the OIT and, and other places. That are equipment and technology that will line item those you might say to be funded out of the development tax. What else have we uh, pinpointed from the development tax? Nothing, yes, nothing specific. specifically. Okay. We will get into the. So is this priority then? These two? This is would priority. Be. This infrastructure, communications infrastructure, will get some discussion. So that's. There will be several and some other things like he's saying within the technology. <laughs> Because we haven't bought any replacement equipment for the last two years, to appreciably. I mean, very, very little. How many uh, people are in your department, Mike? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm on the streets, uh, about 86. And if you count the office staff, it gets it up to about 112. And then there are <coughs> roughly, depending on the day, about 40 or 45 what we call PRN people. Uh, and the number of PRN people is not important because it's, you just use those to to work when it as needed. That's what PRN does. Okay. Like fill-ins <coughs> for vacations and things for illness. Well, I'll make a motion to approve this budget with the ambulances coming out of the development tax. Second. Okay. I mean, the, let me just ask this question. You're on budget, but do you want to us clarify that? Let, I'll let my I want to clarify. Yeah, clarify it. So we look okay. at, I think it's going to come there. Just I just, so, I just didn't want to tie budget's hands or the, or the finance director and the, and the mayor's hands. That's fine. Well, we got just a priority. I agree. It's a, it's, <laughs> that's one of the advantages of having the first budget, is it right? One of the first is you can put it. No? <laughs> you get in, you get your dibs in first. I mean, I I mean agree, what I'm getting at saying. is there's a lot less likelihood that one of these get cut out of the since it's we're asking for the development tax versus if it was just in a normal in a regular budget. I think. Well, even, I though, they, even though theirs is separate, so to speak, it's still uh, what nine and a half cents or something like that of a. 
property tax or whatever. Oh, yeah. as far as the yeah. insurance piece, yeah, yeah they uh -huh. have their own. So, but still, yeah. you know, I feel more comfortable. I feel well. He's done us good with the ambulances around. We've got more people. The only one in life three years is Christy Houston, so it's about time. Well, I agree. I just, you know, they, mm -hmm. they needed two ambulances, and I just didn't want to mm -hmm. overstep them. I don't think we have. We find a better way. With <laughs> 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 All right. All right, we've got a motion and a second on the floor. Any discussion? I just want to say for the budget guys that are listening that may watch this, he has one, two, three, four, five ambulances that are at 170000 or greater. And the state law now says, what, 250,000 miles they have to be inspected annually? 175 have to be inspected annually. Okay. They have to be off the road at two points. Right. Okay. All right. I knew there were some changes in there. And there's 18 with over 100,000 miles on it, starting at 116,000 and going up. That's just in case there's enough right there. Yeah, it's me. We're definitely getting the use of it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Got a motion to take on the floor for further discussion? Yes. The other thing I wanted to just, uh, the other side of this budget is the revenue that we collect. Um, we're estimating that we will collect $5.2 million roughly next year. And the uh, mayor and the finance director and I had a discussion this afternoon. We're, we're looking at something else that might increase that. Significantly, so just keep your focus on it. No other questions. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. Thank you. All right. It's, uh, looks like we're at any other business. Is there any other business coming for the uh, committee? I just want to mention I got. Gave it to Gary earlier tonight to Smyrna Fire, $550 more for our memorial fund that's going out here. Took delivery on that today, so that's added to the fund. Where are we at? What's that about? We're, I give Lisa Nolan uh, $2,100 already, and this right here will be uh, another 550 so that's 2650 And so I, I, I couldn't hear who. Who it came from? Smyrna Fire. So, Laverne, all the yeah. members they put an envelope around. Hey. And I met with Laverne today. Rick, so Rick's going to work on that in the next week. So. Uh, let me say this: the, the Rutherford County Volunteer Fire Chiefs Association uh, donated a uh, thousand. Uh, the Las Casas Volunteer Fire Department donated five hundred dollars. Rutherford Volunteer Fire Department donated two hundred dollars. The Murfreesboro Firefighters Association donated five hundred dollars. And Smyrna to give five hundred fifty dollars tonight or today to Commissioner Hall, and it, it, the firefighters are stepping up for this, and uh, they ought to be commended for the job that they're doing. Uh, it's uh, and I, there's some there's some other things out there that are the business community as far as uh, that, that sales and the fire service has been asked and hadn't come in yet, but uh, hopefully it will before long. Uh, if y'all don't mind. If I could get, I think this is some information that you all as commissioners need to know. Um, I learned of it firsthand by going to the Volunteer Fire Chiefs Association meeting the other night. When, when the winter weather hit, I think the citizens out there need to know and for what the ambulance service and the, uh, the SORT team and the volunteer fire departments did for this, this in this county. Uh, if it's all right with y'all, I'd like to, about a five, a 10 minute uh, presentation from uh, Larry and Chris. Is, is that okay with y'all? We'll be brief. We just wanted to bring to your attention what was transpiring while everybody else was asleep um, or at rest uh, back in a uh, winter storm. We put together an action plan uh, for our fire and rescue response uh, for our winter storm that occurred. So, um, uh, back on January the 29th, we brought all of our personnel in, um, set some objectives and some goals for our public safety uh, response, uh, geared them up uh, by giving them information of, about the weather and, and, and also the objectives that were at hand. Give you a brief description of what we went through. 
uh, we separate uh, we were able to uh, provide a great service during this event um, with roads being treacherous um, many many accidents occurring at one time we had an 18 car pile up on the interstate and what we call the Bermuda Triangle out, out near 89 mile mark <laughs> um, the, the, uh, we also had a five car a seven car um, we had some critical patients and um, our our public safety performed a, 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 a great job during above the and beyond the call of duty uh, we had volunteer stations that were being manned we had volunteer rescue squads that were being manned um, the sort personnel were there uh, and responding and um, we had to we, we we actually had to call some in from the ambulance personnel and also through sort to to manage this incident I compare um, these incidents such as this to the tornado we probably saw more patients and went to more calls than we did in a tornado. Uh, however, this was snow. Um, so those things, we wanted to bring that uh, awareness to you, how everybody worked together real well to, to, to perform when services needed to be rendered. And something I want to call out here that a lot of people, you know, in the time of need don't really know these things, but if this plan action, action plan had not been implemented, we, they would not have had no $8.8 .8 million average response time. It's normally, a lot of times, double that or sometimes even more. But they were able to get to these people in a timely manner and give them the patient care that they needed or extrication or whatever service they needed. So well, by having the, the fire departments manned and these rescue trucks spread out across county, to cover our county better. Me and Chris work great together and I appreciate the assistance he's given me and, and we just kind of put this fire and rescue thing together and work together on it to make it better. But we had the fire department's man in a, in a situation where if there was a wreck or a port of wreck that ESO couldn't get there and AMS couldn't get there, they could get there, secure the scene, uh, mark it with their lights and stuff and then, and then notify ESO or uh, EMS that there wasn't any need for them to respond. So we just, uh, they all just worked good together. We, we brought them in for a, a brief meeting the Thursday before the big storm hit, at told them what we wanted to do, what we wanted to put in action, and everybody agreed to man their stations, and we had uh, was it five different rescue units spread out across the county, where instead of coming from one central location, they were already out there. Um, you know, the volunteer fire departments, the rescue squads, uh, EMS, your office, I think in the, outside the municipalities, they, they they come together, they work together, and they provide a service and, and done a great job. Well, we just want to give you all this report to let you know that we are proactive and that, you know, we can't predict a tornado, but we can predict icy roads. And we, we took steps to, to make sure that there was, they was things in place to uh, protect the public. One thing I'd like to mention, Chris said, it was also calm sleeping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Care of One of the things that is just absolutely amazing, I've worked in this field for 18 years, and it's amazing what goes on at 2 o'clock in the morning in Rutherford County. Oh, yeah. We can have <laughs> 10 units out at one time, but everybody else is fast asleep, and these guys are out here working hard. We have some of the great, I've, I've traveled all over the nation to, uh, working with other responders. I'll, I've said it millions of times, I'll say it again. I'm glad I live in Rutherford County. We have some of the best public safety responders in the nation. And there's dedication, there's enthusiasm, and you know, it's obvious in something like this when we have an 8.8 .8 minute average res rescue response time and a 10.25 minute fire response in snowy weather that people will run semis and other cars are rolling off the roads and, and we're making those quick response times. So with a little bit of uh, planning action, um, some um, thought process, and some information sharing, we were able to do that. These guys got operational period incident action plans every 24, if not 12 hours, to keep them in the loop and tell them what was in service. And after a while, we've learned that what we can man and what we can't. So just to let you know. One other thing, let me mention really quick. A lot of these guys, uh, you know, of course, they're volunteers, and people think, well, that's just a volunteer. A lot of these guys have got more education than many people that do it professionally, and they've done it for longer periods of time than a lot of the new hires. But 
uh, we do budget for our rescue squads and volunteer fire departments, but most of their money is made with fundraisers. And that's one reason you'll hear a lot of us kick in and say, hey, there's a ham breakfast over here. We might debate on which one's better. <laughs> but, you know, I, we I might even get the city right. Tonight said they were doing a pitcher drive. But guys, when you hear that, try to help those guys out in your community because they're out there making money to help you. So. So we, just, we just try to coordinate and have everybody go in the same direction. Well, and, and like you said, I mean, if you look inside the municipalities in this county, if you look at the, 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 the volunteers in, in, in the county, our EMS department, our EMA department, <coughs> uh, I mean, throughout Hall Road for county, uh, the public safety entities around here are second to none. I mean, you can go to other counties and, you know, and see, and see the difference. We, we saw something that night, um, and I don't know if Larry noticed it either. One of the things is we've always kind of worked on individual departments. That day, those guys came in as a team. Everybody worked as a team, and I think that made a big difference. Um, everybody had a part of that, um, and we had some planning, and we were able to, to work with some of this response. So um, we wanted everyone to know that these guys have – whether they're EMS, Sheriff's Department, Fire Departments, whoever it may be, they were out there working while a lot of people were fast asleep. Mm -hmm. Just want to kind of tell you what we were going to do. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, anything else? We stand adjourned. Thank you all.